All right, uh, let's move on now to the general membership. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Let's uh, do roll call now, please. David? Here. Rick? Rick? Here. Here. Sue Ann? Brian? Here. Sue Ann? Here. Sue Ann is here. Helen? Here. Jackie? All right. Is Erin, was she able to? I spoke to her this morning. Um, <clears throat> sir? I, my understanding is she was planning on it. Yeah, so. but she told me that there's a, their dog is sick, so she's working with and the dog. So I, I understand that. Joanne, Rich Gross here. <laughs> oh, and Rich, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rich, I'm here. Okay. Oh, Rich. On Zoom. On Zoom. Rich is on Zoom. And Rich, you can hear everything okay? Yeah, fine. Perfect. Good. Right. Good. Okay. Deanne here. What did he say? Would I can see happy. you and hear you. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move. A second. Second. Okay. Good. Uh, um, excuse me. May I just ask? Can we identify the people that are on the line? We should. Yeah, we should. Yeah. I, I could call them out if you want me to. I, I have their names here. Oh, good. Uh, we have um, Robert and Sue Hipkins, okay. Bill Bowman, Sherry Malloy, Charles Brazick, Emily and Steve Holt, Lucy Hamm, and we have a guest. It just says guest? Yeah. And they identify themselves? Uh, let me ask them too. Mm -hmm. Mystery guest. Oh, Robert Hipkins? No, no. I was, I was saying it was a mystery guest. He's on the phone. Oh, you can see her. Hello? She has her, uh, she's muted. Or he's muted. Okay. So we're going to capture the ones who are present. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Would you, would you like to like? I don't want to pass around the no. sound sheet. Sure. We don't. Since we have these masks on too, would you, uh, sir, would you please? And, and basically, what, what you, what you, what you, what you the best thing to do because the man's taking it down is, is just address it to like Sue Ann and spell your name, and maybe, and that'll help that kind of give us time, and you, she'll get it down. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Carrie. Carrie. Carrie Williams. Yeah. I didn't even recognize you back Well, I didn't have the last one. Nicole Rossi. Nicole Rossi. Nicole Rossi. Nicole Rossi. Nicole Rossi. Christy Riggle. Pam West. Adrian LaValley. Teresa Volney. Bill Fry. You are right, Julian, or you want to wait a minute? F-R-Y. No. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> you can't see me laugh. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Gary. Swim, swim. Posted on the website and all the board members have reviewed it. Are the question? I think is there any corrections to those minutes? Or well, I think I don't know that. No, we discussed those. I just didn't know if because they were posted kind of late, if you would like for me to read them. It might answer some of the. Is there anybody from the public? Questions. Questions. Thank you. 
they are posted on the website. So if anybody, I, I, let's be sensitive to anybody that's online who wants to be read. Anybody here in the room want the minutes to be read? Brian, would you see if they can hear it? Can they hear us on, on the computer on the Zoom? Yep. Yes. Do you want the minutes read, or are you all right with just us just approving them? Just approve. Just approve. Nobody, nobody objects. Nobody objects. Okay. All right. So I move to approve the uh, meeting. The, the, that would be the January. Actually, uh, you already approved That's what I thought. Oh, I'm on the board already approved it. <laughs> okay. I just didn't know for the public's okay. benefit exactly. if they wanted okay. to. Okay. All right. All right. And so, so we, have, we can move on to the number five is the financial report. Now, okay. Um, so do you have motions? No, um, the financials, do you, they also were posted online. Um, they're done in um, first, second, and third quarter. Did everybody read them? Um, Did everybody read them, or would you like me to read them again? <laughs> do you, are, does anybody have any questions on them? You have a question on We're all three quarters? They were in reverse order, yeah, I'll, I'll and that's that. because that's about the way I work online. Yeah, well, I, is I, about I, fast I backwards, as I call it. Um, <laughs> so, so I, I, think I think that's you great. You should just be thankful that I got them out. I, I, I think like, it's great. Oh, wait, wait, I, 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 I want to break my arm, pat myself on the back. I did it all by myself, not Mark helping. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. The way these are laid out is is more or less a p l with a beginning and ending balance. Mm -hmm. you know, usually, I would want to see the full financials of, you guys have talked a lot about the Island Access Fund, you know, uh, past meetings, 99,000, someone threw out there was 109,000. I would expect to see a balance of what that is. Okay, um, I, I can tell you that, and I will go over the, I will go over um, the Island Access Fund. I just, we did not put it out there. Um, I, and it's something we can add to the um, website, I guess, if, if, if we need to. This is a general um, financial of, sure. of the organization. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. So to date, like I was saying before, April, May, and June, well, April, April and May, we were able to get a pretty decent um, – and you guys don't have this either. It's just something I wrote down. The Island Access Fund started out – at the end of uh, May with $101,045.48 in it. And then April and May, we had over $100 in interest for those months. It tanked down to 14 um, and some pennies in June. And then I went back in June because I've been going to the bank every three months trying to get them to, it's the game, you gotta play. Um, and for interest, if I'm correct, we're getting very poor. Interest. Right now, so, so, um, Anyway, it tanked down to $14 in June, in July to $2 and some change, in August and September less than a dollar each. And, and I was there last week. They won't do they won't do anything anymore. They're just it's not. So basically, the bottom line is right now we have $101. I'm sorry, 101,308 dollars and 93 cents. And I'll say that again just so you guys can write that all down if you want in the Island Access Fund. That's 101,308 and 93 cents. And, and that is supposedly in like a money market account, but it doesn't seem to be the world. It doesn't seem to be getting us any money, but it's what it is. Okay. Do you have any other questions on that? Anyone? Okay, so we need a motion to approve the report. Report report. I'll move the report. Well, I have a second. I'll second. Rick seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Jackie, did you vote? I did. I voted yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we can't hear you all the time. Okay. The next is the fire district update. Now, uh, the chief couldn't come, and um, 
Craig also couldn't come, so AJ is going to take over both, all the, all the uh, parts. Of this. So we're going to give you um, the next two. You're up. That sounds good. Okay. That sounds good. I'm going to give you the reader, the Reader's Digest version of the uh, fire board. Um, I'll answer any questions on both topics at the end, um, but just kind of in bullet fashion. Uh, we did have a fire board meeting here this last Friday. Um, by the way, this was not a typical third Friday meeting. We decided uh, for the, the month of November and December to make it the second Friday. So for those of you that plan on attending, we did have uh, even one of our commissioners lose our meeting as a result of not realizing about that little change. So the rest of the year in regards to meetings, um, the uh, fire board will meet the third Friday all the way up into September. September is our budget meeting. That's when it goes to Saturdays. So that helps with any of you that would like to get more detailed uh, versions of the fire board, we can do that. Uh, <clears throat> year to date, fire department has uh, responded to 120 calls. About 85% of them are uh, medical related. <clears throat> uh, I assume that the chief has keeps you, you up to speed on previous quarters. So I'm kind of just focusing on the latest information that you may not be aware of. I'm assuming that you're up to speed with the older stuff. Uh, we did approve um, yesterday, I'm sorry, Friday, a uh, radio replacement project. This was a big ticket item, mandatory by the district. It, was, uh, uh, it changed the, uh, the type of communication link. Yeah. And so- We've actually amended that state federal government, right? Exactly. Not, not and, and lots of that technology, you know, it goes digital and, and, and equipment becomes obsolete. So that was, that was one of our larger line items here that recently. Um, on the more positive side, from a budgetary standpoint, the chief uh, applied for and got a firehouse subs grant for $21,000 to receive night vision goggles, two pairs of night vision goggles for this island. And if you think of a fire district that may be you know, most sensitive to lack of street lights, um, wow. you know, state lands, water rescues at night, um, I can't tell you how uh, you know, excited we are about having that capability uh, as are uh, all the firefighters. All of them are going to be trained in the use of this. Um, very, not, very nice of fire, firehouse sub to do this. Uh, the chief was wise enough to, to, to apply for the grant. Firehouse, I didn't realize this, but they do about 100 grants in the, across the country. They were a very small uh, fraternity that got that, and um, hats off to the chief for that one. Speaking of grants, a grant recently came in for our brush trucks. Uh, for those of you that may not know this, um, uh, first of all, let me, let me step back. All four trucks, all water carrying trucks that we have are all uh, received here for free. We, did, we didn't pay for any of those trucks when we acquired them. That's because all four of those trucks were retired by the other places that they had. The, the two military trucks, actually come from the forestry department and they actually maintain the title on them so we don't actually own them the other two trucks uh were um were retired from uh pine island who that the, that particular truck was retired a second time because pine island got it for free from iona mcgregor and uh and then this last truck that we received uh it's escaping me all of a sudden where we got it my point is that these trucks um are old, freeze not ever really free. We have to maintain them. There's annual pump and, and hose testing and things of that nature that need to be done. Um, but it's a great deal. Uh, a new fire truck is about a $700,000 ticket item. So I, I want you to you know, appreciate that the board really pushes your dollars a long way when you can have all that truck capability for free. Also keep in mind, unlike on the mainland, when, the, when most departments show up for mutual aid responses, they bring their own trucks. If, if, if one truck goes down, your mutual aid partner has their own truck, we sit out here with all we got. What we got is all we're gonna have. And uh, using an example of the Saw Vista fire back in 2017, uh, that fire basically ran from midnight to uh, sunup. Over the course of that time period, 37 <laughs> units responded from the mainland. A unit is anywhere from two to four firefighters showing up at emergency speeds in the middle of the night to get to the marina and then cross the water. And we had 90 firefighters show up over the course of those six or seven hours. They come and use our equipment and our equipment only. 
So protecting and keeping that stuff maintained, even though it's cheap and retired, uh, is, a, is, a, is a very important task for the fire department. Um, why I went to that kind of secure this route about the trucks was I mentioned the brush truck. We do receive a grant when we improve the military trucks, which, which really don't come, um, you know, fully equipped. Uh, the forestry department or, uh, actually gives us a 50-50 grant. We received $4,267 for the two and a half ton brush truck, meaning we spent $5,535 on that truck and, and we got I'm sorry, 8535 and we got our half on that recently. Um, on to other things that happened. We did approve, um, uh, we signed a contract for the pole barn to Team Davenport. Uh, we were asked by our engineer in order to finish out the permitting that the contractor be identified. This was requested a month ago, and so we accomplished that. We also awarded the road trimming contract uh, to clean cut. Clean cut has done this twice before. This will be their third run. $17,500 to trim our roads. I'm hoping when you guys start talking about the uh, Brazilian pepper initiative that we maybe cut that number down significantly in years to come because Brazilian pepper is a good portion of that, that number. Um, and then I should also mention that there's also, uh, there, was, there was an election that took place uh, Tom Jenkins and I occupy seats one and two, uh, respectively. Our terms come up in two years. The other three seats, three, four, and five, came up just recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Steve Sward on seat three, uh, Bill Burns on seat four, and Mike Phillips Act on seat five. So Mike Phillips Act is a new uh, commissioner for us and attended this last, this last meeting Thanks. at this first meeting. That's all I have on the uh, on the fire district update. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to go into the roads, which which is also part of our uh, our budgeting process at the district. But uh, okay, I'm going to I'm going to go. Uh, go ahead. I'll, I got right down. Uh, I don't think they're still on it. I contract for the new building to Team Davenport. Verona also been on it, right? Yes. And what was Verona? What was your question? That's okay. Yeah, now what was your criteria? How did you decide? Uh, the price was significantly higher for Verona. That would be just the simplest way to say it. There was a little bit of a, uh, a change in his contractors as well. Uh, so we were at a point here, we've been, we've been talking about this for many, many months. It was time that we had to push off the dock and, and it was rather easy decision. There were other criteria, but I think that just answers the question. But that of course was less expensive. Considerably. Uh, was there another hand up yeah, some place? Yeah. Brian, could you walk him through uh, what the status of the, as you understand it, permitting and development order process is, and Davenport uh, bid on uh, draft plans and has some caveats. I, I have no idea. I don't know any of those details. It was in the. Uh, well, do you know? So, so you, you want to offer? You can feel free to do that. It was in the village. So, so, so guys. There's a fire board meeting for discussion. I, I was going to say topic. that, 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 that this is a UCCA and, board meeting, and we're just getting an overview. From, yeah. um, and, 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 and if they want that kind of information, I, they go to the fire board meeting. Okay, great, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll pivot right into the uh, roads if you'd like me to. Um, let me see. Uh, yesterday, we were supposed to have a major grading day. We had set up a crew, multiple bobcats, materials. Uh, we were going to tackle North Airport Road, East Sierra, uh, with some major changes. I shouldn't say major changes, but you would have seen significant improvement there. And uh, and Spanish Gold, those were the ones that were slated along with if, if we had more time. Uh, and by the way, that grader does a huge amount of work in a very short period of time. Mark Justice's MHA contracting, uh, these guys are pros. They run these equipment, uh, you know, 40 hours a week. Um, we're very blessed to have them and their talent out here, and um, and they're they're getting experience and dealing with our roads. Then um, tropical storm. What was one? What was it called? Etta. 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 I actually flew in on on Monday. I didn't expect to get off the ground uh, because of what they were predicting on Monday. Monday was beautiful. Tuesday was beautiful. I have to tell you guys that we got past this. And Wednesday was I couldn't believe it. 
I had at least 15 different videos. I walked out uh, at high tide during that morning with uh, 30 mile an hour winds, 50 mile an hour gusts, and the piling up of the water at high tide um, completely inundated um, the island, particularly around the canals um, and the north end. Uh, I was knee deep down East Sierra. Um, I have pictures of, of the surf crashing not only over the beach at the east end of the runway, but onto the airstrip itself. The water was rushing five knots down East Sierra, carrying uh, eight by eight pieces of lumber. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Now, I know we've had other events of maybe similar magnitude. I've had a couple other long, uh, Sherman, uh, JJ said this, this was as, as crazy as they've seen. As a result of that Wednesday, we called off Saturday's work expecting huge um, water problems. I can't get over where the water went. Um, this was it, it's one of the best um, exits of water of that volume that I've ever seen. The north end is still in trouble, but uh, still underwater in many places. We would not have been able to do North Airport Road. Um, and, and I would also say that I'd also, as you can imagine, you can only prepare for a certain percentage of events. That kind of event, I don't think anything that the, that the Road Commission can can ever completely button up or avoid those kinds of. Uh, that, that's kind of almost, it almost felt to me like once in a ten year kind of disaster. But, but we survived it, and and even with a little box blading around, um, Brian's guys do do some work around here. Um, Safety Harbor Club does through their place and all the way to the airstrip. Uh, I was on the box blade. I think things are pretty well kind of they're, they're manageable right now. And we have slated next Friday, this coming Friday, as a replacement for the greater crew. I do also want to mention, um, you know, Mark Justice, his business, they do, multi, they do million dollar contracts of underground work. They run eight crews at a time. They've done 30 foot slurry walls around coal mines. They're experts in, in these kinds of, of, of this kind of work. And I beg and borrow their people. So um, I'm, we're all out here sometimes subject to their availability. And luckily I've got, I've got them on a work day here this coming Friday. So everything I just described, we can clean up. Um, we're gonna tackle that crazy hole at the end of Barge Road crossing into the airstrip. Uh, the swale I think is doing some of its job, helping with percolation rates and, and things like that. You're gonna see continued improvement on, on that stuff. Those three roads, by the way, are, are three of the big five. I think all of you know that, the, the big five, Rum Road, uh, eat, uh, Harbor Bend through Safety Harbor Club, uh, Spanish Gold, East Sierra, and North Airport. We identified those as the big five, saying that 75 to 80% of the response times that the fire district, district will go at, at emergency speeds are basically covered on those five. We're not forgetting the rest of the roads, which means, we're, and we're going to make a much more aggressive approach this year, early in the season, to start filling in some of those holes that exist on, on these other streets. Um, we're doing it literally linearly from the fire house. So you're going to see the first hole in a road and tackle before the last one, unless there's something that's absolutely impassable. Um, but you will start to see work <clears throat> done there. It'll either be done uh, by adding a very expensive fill. It will be a similar method that we used on Kingfisher, meaning um, a large, larger aggregate uh, stone underneath topped off with uh, high calcium pit shell to bind bind together. Um, that concept, which is what we what we did down the entire length of Kingfisher, has proven that it holds up well. It doesn't move very far. I will tell you, and, and, and we've had it twice that I know since that road was completed, if sure. water sits on top of that mix, the pit shell has a tendency to kind of want to melt away a little bit. We lose some of those fines on the top. And, and so we're going to, the crazy thing about this, I will never be jobless. By the way, I don't get paid. Uh, this, well, the minute that we put these places in place, Mother Nature starts to unwind them again. Gravity, rain, etc. cetera. Um, and, and water is the number one enemy of the road. So uh, I, right now, Kingfisher is a little choppy. It's a little little heavy on the, on the stone side. We'll have to put some fines back up there. Most of them can be recaptured again and brought back up on top. If we roll it, the, the fines tend to kind of come up and the, or, or the heavier stuff goes back down. And we'll continue. And there's no playbook for this, guys. Um, Brian's been around forever. You know how, how long there's been a kind of revolving door of talent that's taken this on, some some better than others. 
but this has always been kind of a, a work in progress and learning how to best handle this. And I think we're going to try to increase the speed of the roads in, in solving these road problems now that we've got some proven formulas. And we really, we said we wanted to lead this community up the hill, not push them. And I, I think we've demonstrated that we've got some good formulas. So um, that's really all I have on the roads. And AJ, I want to thank you for what you have done. That team Fisher did help. I went over there. I couldn't believe how well it held up. Now, are you going to use that same type of material you said on all the other roads? Well, one of one of the real benefits about Kingfisher, to me, there was only one solution. Because of the number of homes that were there and, and where they had built their landscaping, et cetera, there was no opportunity to capture any material on the sides. So we had to bring it all in. Very expensive proposition, 130 to $140 a cubic yard. We spent uh, $50,000. Uh, on that road, and I don't think you can afford to spend that kind of money on, on roads that have three homes and the rest of the vacant lots. We did in that circumstance because it was the low end of the island. Uh, the philosophy was property values were lower down there when people <laughs> purchase. They, should, they kind of know what you're buying when you get down there. Those of us that live on the other end, I happen to live on the highest point in, on Panama Shell. I don't have any water problems. Um, so is it fair to, to use taxpayer dollars for everything on, on the low end of the island? And, and we concluded that we used Kingfisher as an example where there were enough homes with enough property values that those people should be doing some type of a cost sharing. And, and I did collect money from all of them. That's right. 99% right. of the people gave on that street. Actually, I only thought it was 60 some percent. Oh, okay. um, but uh, we got we got 100% of our of the money we asked yeah, for, which yeah. was $25,000. You guys, the UCCA was kind enough to offer 5,000 to help the fire district with the match. 20,000 came from the fire district's budget, and that came up with 50. I held 10% reserve, about $5,000, <laughs> knowing that once we lived with it, we'd find some places that needed something to change. Uh, there is a low spot. I, I don't remember the address, but it's in front of Pelican Brief. There's a couple other. There's a couple of places where we'll need to we'll need to go a little higher, and that was the purpose of the uh, of the reserve. But to your point. The reason why that worked, why we spent 50 grand, is if you contiguously lay that material, the, the 57 stone down first, and then the pit shell on top, you have a, 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 a model that runs the entire length. If we don't do that, if we use 57 stone with pit shell on top in a hole, like we did in some of those crazy holes that used to be on North Airport, they fill the holes perfectly. But the type of material that's in front of that hole and behind the hole is different. And that granular sandy stuff that you find in many other places of the island, particularly on the south side, moves much faster than one inch 57 stone or um, the, the pit shell. So I already know that as we fill these holes, as you start to backsplate over it or do some basic maintenance, you start to take that perfect material formula and you start to dilute it by bringing in other materials. And that's why, you know, that's why I don't want to go and do this everywhere until we really see how that spot project holds up over a year or so. Our department is 80,000. Yes, sir. And that includes the 17.5 that's coming out of the trimming. So the roads are the net of that. And 63,500 60, 60, right. is roads, right. and 17.5 is trimming. trimming. Yeah. So to get to the whole island, you'll need more donations. Uh, yeah, the concept would be probably, I, I'll give you my own personal favorite, and there's debate amongst those of us that are working it still. Uh, uh, Schooner is another one that has the same kind of vibe as Kingfisher, right? Encroachment, lots of problems, and I'm I'm of the opinion once we identify the, the proper budget, we'll do the same 50 50 match there. And, and I think if the people, now that they can see the other road held up so well, I and I actually went door to door and knocked on the doors, and some people gave more than we were asking yeah. for. Yes, they were that's very right. generous. Yeah. But it, it worked. I mean, it was a little job, but it worked. I'm absolutely convinced that, by the way, all the work that was done initially by the, the committee while they were under Sunshine as part of the fire district. In the public meetings that we held, we identified the fact that, um, uh, oh, I lost my thought on where I was going with that. Um, it's a question that you have to start. Prior More money. 
Just, yeah, just <laughs> different conditions are different yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, I forgot where I was going with that. I'm probably missed. Uh, I think I identified that there was three or four hundred thousand dollars over a five-year cycle, and that that is uh, true. That there were five priority roads to focus on, as they were the main arteries on the island, and that the most that you'd be able to do on the side roads might be a couple hundred feet or less, depending on how bad it was within the main arteries. And there are uh, there's a whole tab on the fire district website that has most of those original documents. Um, Bill did participate in some of those original meetings, as did a number of other people, and uh, and so if you want, that's a good place to go to get more information if you care. By the way, speaking of other people, I want to mention the original committee was myself, uh, Mark Justice, uh, Rick Fox, Hart Kelly, and uh, Travis Parker. Travis and Hart both left the island. Um, the original three of us, Fox, um, Mark and myself still meet uh, regularly, but we're not part of the fire district for sunshine reasons. The sunshine requires that we can't talk about anything unless we're in a public meeting. You can't fix roads without talking to each other. So um, we've chosen that if we, if we want to know more about what's going on with the roads, it, the place to come is the fire district meeting. We hold monthly meetings. It's on the agenda every single time, and I've asked every single time if there's any questions. There's always a presentation. I also want to thank Rick Nolan, he's, he's worked on, on, he's joined some of our, our in, more informal meetings. Mike Phillipsack, Tom Jenkins, Dan Hurley. I don't know how many of you know Dan. He, he's fairly new to the island. He's a, he's a farmer, I think, from Indiana. Ohio. Ohio, Ohio thank you. He, he's gifted on equipment. He knows how to run the grader. He and I did about four or five spot projects at the, in the late spring last year, and he's capable. Uh, there's a new resident. Um, Lives next door to, uh, to Zeke, uh, forget the Prater's uh, place. Got the name of Scott Greer. He's a commercial contractor in Orlando. He's bringing down his own Kubota. I mean, we're, get, we're getting some momentum and some extra talent, um, which, which is going to help too. So I, I think, I think we've, got, we've got a plan, we've got proven results, and we've got some increased momentum. So I, and, oh, I don't, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. The, the, the point was to say that, that, that real estate values, I think, are directly tied to not looking like a third world country out here sometimes. And I'm convinced that if we can get people to commit a little bit of their own dollars to solving problems on their own streets, um, they'll see multiples of that commitment or that, that donation uh, brought back in property. Now. And now you have Kingfisher as an example, so I think that that'll help. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we'll do too many with that contiguous fifty thousand dollar run. It's because it's expensive. But yeah. Linearly, that's the cost. Um, but I, I think you know. Well, I was going to ask a question with regard to that then, since you brought it up. Because Harbor Bend is such a busy road, it, it's a main road. Is that the type of road you would use that on, or wouldn't you? Uh, well, you know, Harbor Bend's unique from the standpoint that we respect that Safety Harbor's wish to kind of keep within their own confines. Um, they do their own thing, um, and they do most of it without um, our budget help. Uh, it's continuous grading, though, I'll tell you right now, after this past storm. And the reason yeah. why is because it is still slightly inverted. Yeah. If you have an inverted site, you, you, the water goes to the surface of the roadway, and that is absolutely the kiss of death. It only takes about three or four carts to go over yeah. a puddle. And all that material gets ejected with the water, and you got yourself a Class A pothole. And that's the, that's the trouble there. They would need to bring in some serious material or re-crown, which they could do, re-crown the material that's there, and, and you have yourself a, a Class A road again. Um, so that's, there's two ways to approach that. Build the structure properly and then maintain it. Or don't spend the money on proper structure, but maintain the heck out of it every single time it rains. And that's what they're doing. He, he drives that right. over there back and forth. Yeah. But I'll respect their decision to stay within the, okay. the confines of safety harbor. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm a licensed civil engineer, okay, and I have been for 40 years. And I can tell you one of the big problems we have is dragging this uh, big weight behind a, uh, the uh, Jeeps and stuff, or the just dragging that weight. Because what it's doing is putting the soil out on the side and essentially it's turning the roads into a gully. What you have to do is crown it. That means you need a grader and you should be pushing instead of pulling. 
if, if you watch, I brine pull something around all the time. I mean, it makes it nice for a while, but it pushes the soil out to the side, which <clears> makes <throat> the road capture the water and puddles. Yeah, I, to Mark Justice's credit, he, I paid $22,000 for that Bobcat grader attachment. You can plug yes. in the Bobcats with all kinds of things, and it works like a charm. That, it's a that's real what grader. you need. The only yeah. problem is that a lot of the power lines and all that are on the roads are a matter of inches below the surface yeah. now. And you have to be really careful that when you push that soil, you don't cut them away. And every time that we do work like that, we have to bring the locators out to avoid the liability. And that's why you see lines marking up ahead of time, just for that reason. We've tripped, we've tripped some lines already. Not, nothing heavy. We haven't hit any electrical. But some people have lost the internet. So that, there's an issue with that, too. But crowning, will also, crowning it is a solution. Yeah, I was going to, right to that point, uh, Tom Levin did the initial work on this, identified four different soil areas. I'm not, I, I'm going to keep going with questions. I don't want to take over your meeting, but um, the, the point is the four, the four, di four different uh, soil types. Uh, Rum Road is very granular and very dry. It self seal. It self heals. Um, we try to grade it. it. It moves instantly with a little bit of rain because it's so granular. And I don't think a crown is a good solution for that road because it <clears> won't last. It, it was. It's gone in, in less than 30 days. Conversely, on the north side. Uh, more organics, it, they bond together well, uh, or we or we use the the model that we did on Kingfisher. That's a that's a classic solution of crowning the right way, and it will stay. So we've got about four different techniques we're using. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Yeah, really good info. I mean, uh, well, okay, go ahead. Yeah, just one thing that I, I wish we could do is like I wish we had a video of you saying all that that we could post, right? for the island to know, because unless you're at this meeting and chime in, you, you don't get that detail. You're not going to get it from a simple blog post and stuff like that. I think there's a, a real lack of education out there. Because for me, I was like, hey, you got big potholes on oral basis. When, when is that going to happen? Coming around. Right? Or whatever, you know? So this is really good info knowing that, hey, you got the big five, and, you know, kind of work from the fire station out and everything on these others. It's going to take, you know, multiple owners. Property owners donating money, all good info that I think the majority of the island does not know. Yeah. And Would you guys like 60 seconds of the tidal area? I know that was a little bit of a, of a prickly issue at one point. Um, the boat basin curve. Uh, I will tell you, nothing will be solved on that by the airstrip in, until we do something about the tidal flow. And so we decided it was aggressive, but we built that curve around the boat basin to try to cap off. 99% of the time. We'd never get this cr the crazy one we just had. But um, but that concept does work. Um, and, and that boat basin was responsible, I estimate, for about 30% of that tidal intrusion on the big tidal day, uh, days. So we you, it's like turning on a bathtub. If you could cut off 30% of the flow, you, you got, you know, the, the, the tidal event is typically one to two hours before it, you know, it, it peaks and then, and then goes away. And so I viewed that project as a great victory. Even this major uh, tide, it, it went right to the very tippy top of that one foot uh, high curb and did not breach it. However, well, 70 percent. it was coming through the drains into the roads. Mm -hmm. No, it, was not. no, it wasn't. There was I, a, saw, I saw that. I it's a there was doing. one way. Yeah, actually, you don't have one way valves on that, do you? Yes, sir, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. They, have you they always originally? Have originally, you always had? Oh, okay, originally. originally. Yeah, no, so that's for this last this last thing. It, it actually worked like. Okay, I looked at it the last one a couple of months ago. Well, I, again, for the record, that from day one, those those had uh, one way valves. You didn't see them down there. They're actually hidden. Um, <laughs> but uh, the one problem we have with the valves, since you brought it up, is that um, the small as those little uh, breaks are, we had little pieces of of, of uh, all the all the debris went in there and did clog them up. Those valves can be pulled up and and released. So. I think we've got a winning model there. The most exciting thing I want to say, and oh God, we have located a professor of hydrology from Florida Gulf State University that's slated to come out here. She's already accepted our invitation and bringing one of her geology um, uh, assistant professors or something of that nature who's a specialist in barrier islands. And I'm convinced we can't get to the other 70%, the ancient beach problem without some professional help. That's just over my pay grade. And so we're going to try to get a real technical report done on the on the cheap and, and try to solve um, the real title problem. Yes. 
It's wonderful. What but that, that that alone, I think yeah. that, that you diminish the um, how 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 huge that is because I don't think people on the island understand how expensive um, <coughs> to get people that really know what. For example, pros the area, to the pros to come out, yeah, yeah. and how expensive it is. And we've done a few projects just in the dunes to try to get, and, and I mean, it, we're talking ten, twenty thousand dollars just to get them to come out and just the report, and it, just the report, yeah. not, not the action that they want to take. So, uh, so that is huge that someone's coming out on the jeep to do yeah. that. It's, it's huge. More, they, more to come on all this. Yeah, exactly. They actually don't know <clears throat> that they're not roads that they. That they're not officially roads. That's the other thing. The people, the new people that come, yeah. all the roads are really not. You know, that's why well, they're, they're private money. pathway yes. existence. Yeah, that's it's very convenient for the county to not call them roads when they don't want to pay us. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, and I think that I think that that probably is a huge misconception to, to many newcomers on the island. Is yeah. They're like these roads, and and especially people that buy houses, and they're like, oh, well, we pay taxes. Well, unfortunately, these are not roads because roads would mean that the county takes care of them and they don't because they are our private pathways and so nobody can take care of them except yeah. us speaking to that we can get deeper into it later but you know that, that's just a lack of education and there's not an organization this one included right now that educates the island right of what we are we're an unincorporated part of the county we can never become an independent municipality you know, they're private pathways. We can't, you know, really can't solve the golf cart problem. It's going to be self-regulation. Um, you know, so it's to, to me, it's it's an education. I think I think a lot of the the, the public backlash on on the curb was people going, well, what's, what's next? next? You know, well, well, what's next? You know, concrete paths and, and stuff like that. And then, and then, you know, I think I've just heard a few pieces of feedback. It's just the look of it. It's like, can we, can we like put some coral over it or something, you know, whatever. Yeah. So. I, I hear people <laughs> mention that to me too. And sure. They don't really understand. And again, and last year I spoke to, I went into Fort Myers, spoke to some of the councilmen. They will meet in Canada. Yeah. They, they, but they, but they, just, if we, if we got everybody, we could cut everybody's golf cart maintenance bill in half. We yeah. could pay for all the beautification <laughs> around that you <laughs> ever want. So thank you for your time. Oh, there there was? Yeah. No, no question, just a comment. Uh, I think everybody on the island uh, really needs to give thanks to both AJ, Mark, Justice, uh, the fire board. There were tremendous fights over a year and a half or two years uh, to get to the point to use taxpayer money. And uh, I agree with AJ that that has been money well spent, especially when uh, those that are directly impacted have donated their own additional money to, to do the cost share. So, because uh, I've, I've been out here nine years, I've, I've seen the old uh, road commission and the old road company, uh, and the biggest issue was always about Fund. a funding stream that was relatively reliable and, and could, they could create a plan to prioritize the roads, as opposed to what someone decided uh, this week they wanted to have done because they did a, donated some money. So again, I, I think the whole island uh, really needs to thank AJ and Mark and Rick and everybody else that has uh, leaned on shovel or pulled a rake um, because it's been important work. And, and I think the roads have improved dramatically over the last three years since we've been doing it. Oh, they have. The last comment that I'd make is, is that anyone that's not happy with the roads, I'm sure AJ would just love for you to volunteer <laughs> your time and your money to assist. And, and if you can't do either one of those things, then uh, maybe you should just Nod, nod your head. Thank him for the work. Well, I will tell you, you and I haven't agreed on a lot of things, but I but that we have. listen. To, I want to, I want you to know how much I appreciated your support four years ago when when it was Bill Fry and Tom Jenkins and I voting for these initiatives to get taxpayer dollars to solve this problem. While we did not have a unanimous vote on the board, and if it wasn't for for Bill being there and supporting the roads, this wouldn't have happened either. So thank you. Just the, the question about like five roads, I just happened to glance down at my minutes at the last January meeting and I named the five roads. I said they're focusing on and I named them. So they're in the But we are moving along, guys. I want you to know we're I, it's my goal to ultimately get there. And that's another thing. People here that are new do not understand that it goes slow because of where we are, what you have to bring out here and everything else. 
that, that, that kind of goes back to our yeah. our lack of communication. Yeah. Like you said, and, and that's one of the things that, or at least one of my pa passions, is to really try to get the communication efforts up to this island, so that you know, so that there's just too much. There's too much. I don't even know what the word is. It goes around and, and it's out there, and people are like, oh no, no, I heard that, you know, and it just. We need. We, we should pull together. That. We should exactly. all pull together. We just need a, a yeah. common ground of communication. There is a lot of inaccurate. <laughs> but we just need. A, we just need a common ground of communication <laughs> that people can go to and say, "Hey, this, this okay. you can rely on this." And so that that's really that's my passion for this for for us. Well, thanks for your support, everybody. Okay, thanks thank for your you, time. Okay. okay. Thanks. 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 thanks again. Okay, we're ready to move on now. Um, on number eight, resilience yes. efforts. Yes. Now. That is an, another issue because huge. January is coming. <clears throat> it has been out there that people are what they're supposed to be doing, and I don't think many people are doing it. David, do you want to comment further on this, please? Yeah. So the the, the resilience well, I'm sorry, back up. So the, there was a um, there's county ordinance <clears throat> that addresses our our island <clears throat> that says by. <clears throat> And, and by the way, from now on, David is going to moderate. If, if any, we can all interject or ask questions, but I would like him to handle these next few discussions. So, so there's an ordinance that says all Brazilian pepper has to be eradicated by January 1st, 2021. That's been talked about for a long time, and it's true. And we've tried, I think, over time, send out notices, hey, by the way, it's coming. Or whenever meetings occur, people say, hey, it's coming. You need to do this. But... Um, to date, I don't think there's been any formal communication with the county codes or the, the uh, environmental or anybody else um, about what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, and how they're going to approach it. And so the board decided to send a letter under the signature of, jo of Joanne to the, the government, to the codes first, um, asking what their plan was. And the intent was not, it was kind of, I was kind of mixed, like mixed emotions. You want to, you know, poke the bear. Yeah. At the same time, the bear's coming. And so what we don't want to have happen is that January 4th, somebody drives by somebody's yard because their pepper's in their yard says, hey, Paul, code enforcer, this is in violation of the ordinance. Enforce it. And so just like we've seen with other brushes the piles of brush or whatever, neighbor turns against neighbor, and then codes has to enforce it, and then it's one by one by one. And that's not good. That's not good for community spirit. And that's the important that I think we need to do. So wrote the letter, said what's your plan? Help us understand what you're gonna do, when you're gonna do it, and what the fines are, how do you do that? So we can communicate to the public that have pepper on their, their land to say, okay, here's the deal. County says that the codes enforcement folks are going to start enforcing this as stated January 1st or whatever date they say they're going to start it. And if they do, they're going to come and do a round of looks or whatever they're going to do, however they plan to do it. They're going to tell us. And then they're going to start sending out letters or whatever they're going to do. And here's the fine that would be associated with that for those that would have a chance to, you know, how we've done in other codes. If, you're excited for a code like I have for my pile brush. You know, you, you have a you have a, a period of time to cure it, right? You say they, they give you 30 days or whatever to make some remediation to get rid of it. Well, so we need to know this plan so we can communicate to the our to the membership, but into the island to say this is what it is. We will I'll then have a details to send out to these absentee home landowners that don't are here. They may or may not live at the address that they've listed on LEPA. Try to let them know, here's what's coming, for real. Not just speculation, this is what Kyoto just said. So that was on the 23rd of September that we sent that out by email. They replied on that 23rd, the, the initial person received it. They replied, says, you received this, I forwarded it to my supervisors, and up it went. Um, on the 28th, the head, Carol Liz, replied and said, we're in receipt of this. I'm going to schedule a meeting with county codes and with the community development um, group and talk about this and reply to your, your request for what, what our plan is. Uh, and then I um, sent her out a, a status on October 29th to 
to say, hey, it's been a while, we haven't heard back, what's the deal? And she said they did meet, um, she replied on 11-4, which is not too long ago, they did meet and they discussed this matter <laughs> and that they were going to reply to us with whatever their outcome was shortly. Now, <laughs> this is some days past the fourth. So I did let them know in that, that I had in that original email follow-up that we had this meeting today. And that we were hoping to have some information to be able to send out to the membership, or at least talk to the membership today about. It. Now, I haven't received that, but I will tomorrow when the office is open, email again. Joanne has asked me to kind of keep asking them, so that's why I'm doing that. But get some answers. So if I can get some answers and we know the truth, we'll get it out to the, if I email something to the community to say, here's the deal. Here's what they're planning to do, when they're planning to do it, what the fines are, or whatever the thing is, what we want to do. What we want to try to do is be proactive in this somehow so as we don't get to the, the county codes getting called by someone who's aggravated because the oh no get back to his thing and stuff it back in his face so we don't want that to happen so we don't want neighbor on neighbor kind of bad blood going on so we want to try to solve it so i'll let i just gonna keep on it that's all i know to do keep pestering them um, and try to get some response. Hey, question back here. Yeah, I, I recommended to the UCC a couple of years ago um, that it's an education thing. And remember that the people that have this problem are vacant lot owners that may have never visited the island after they bought <clears throat> the property. We know that. There, there are less than 200 or 300 or so, but less than 300 uh, lots uh, that are listed as vacant. I think it's it's even less than the 300. Uh, and you can easily figure those out from uh, the download of the data from the LIPA website. Um, it would cost this this group less than a couple of hundred dollars to send a letter to those three uh, and at least tell them what it is that, that is coming up and how bad the fines could be. Right. And second, uh, for you to ask for their email information, or if they told, if they tell you that they've sold it, uh, to tell you that they've sold it, then and you'd be able to, to go pull the data from the LIPA. So, so a part of so part of this initial effort was the letter to the county to get the details. And the second part was a discussion with the board about the opportunities we have to do just that: is to send a letter just to the people that have those problems that need to be addressed. And also an informational thing to say, here's how you solve it. Here are the people that do this service. Here's the approximate cost it'll take to clear your land and all the things. So they don't have to even think about it. They can just do go the down the list sure. and do the work. And that way they can be given the facts and some options. That's our but, goal. But my point yeah. is, is that you, you'll, you'll wait until hell freezes over before right. the county gives you a real answer. And we already know what the bottom line answer is. It's exactly what you just said. Is someone has to contact those 300 vacant lot owners. Someone has to tell them the three or four or five uh, companies on the island that are willing to right. do the work, and contact information, yeah. and so on. My suggestion would be that the board take that action immediately rather than wait uh, another, we, another we, yeah. four we days. To, we, the thing we, is, too, that's, and, and I'm sorry for interrupting, but some of the addresses are not even absolutely right. right. They're, but they're you won't know that until hours. you send letters. Well, you have right. other things. Yeah, so, right. so right. you know, speaking to this, I mean, one, one thing with the Brazilian mm -hmm. couple, we did this to ourselves, mm -hmm. right? The community panel back in 2012 to 14 did this, and there's the dark sky ordinance that kicks in on the same day, right? So mm -hmm. it's not just Brazilian pepper, it's lighting. There are tons of homes in violation of that as of right now, and will be on January 1st. You know, I would speak to, I, I agree, I think this organization needs to try to communicate with those property owners. From from my analysis back in the spring, and some of you know it, and maybe some don't, you know, our code enforcement has been weaponized the last couple of years, and it's just wrong. We are just a neighborhood. That's what we are, and we need to be neighborly, and we need to come up with a way that if it's pawn fronds that are your deal that you can't stand because Duncan or whoever has dumped them on a vacant lot, it's like we should reach out to neighbors and let them know before just calling up Paul Brown 
and, and make an account of forceful things. The same thing on the Brazilian pepper. It's like we probably are waking up a sleeping bear. I have I have some you know something to add to it. I have a lot on Rum Road. I paid JJ to eradicate the Brazilian pepper. And then this last week I get a letter from community planning environmental dude saying these you know writing me up over to a possible code in, uh, enforcement because a sea, a, a very small seed grape got damaged. And it's like what? So did somebody so, tell them that? Did somebody report it? How did they find out? I don't know. He was he was out. He t he sent me a picture of it on <laughs> on my property. And from what I understand, Brian might have gotten written up. Davenport got written up. Yep. Someone else got written up. And and that guy's stance now is you shouldn't be removing anything from your property without coming to me first. Which the ordinance does not say, does not say that. that you need any permit to pull that Brazilian pepper. And there's going to be residual damage. <clears throat> there's no doubt. So we're about to have this fight now because this other dude is now like kingmaker and wants to be involved in anything that happens before you touch even Brazilian pepper. Have you gone over him? Oh, I'm about to. I've sent him two other emails with questions for specific things and he hasn't responded. Okay. So, so I think, but this is the, um, I don't want to jump, I don't want to jump ahead, I jump yeah. ahead to number nine, but we need to get to number nine because this, all the things that we've talked about have been leading to the place that what we don't want to have, in my opinion, we don't want to have a swim go fight the battle, go fight the battle, this one fight the battle, that we need to fight the battle. battle. With, with the inclusion of those people to do it, but I don't want to feel right. Can you make it short? Well, yeah, my point though <laughs> is, is that you know 300 lot owners, or roughly 300 lot owners, don't probably know the problem. They need to be notified. If you're going to do it anyway, do it now yeah, rather than a month from now. No, there's no reason to delay. But my main, main problem with the board has been that, that the same topics show up on in, in the few minutes that are posted on the website or that are in the meetings that I've <laughs> attended either in person or by phone. And nothing gets actually, a, a trigger is never pulled to do an action. This is an easy action. Uh, to do. It's less than 300 letters. To Swin's comment well, about dark skies. Well, wait, I'm going to jump back there. It, it, you you want to say it's easy, but David has done his due diligence. He's done it. It's it's preemptive to send anything out there to a homeowner if we don't have facts about what is going to happen. What's the course of action here? It, it's, it's quite preemptive to them because they're just going to read it and say, ah, oh, you know what? So they tell me I got to clear it, but a, but there's not going to be any fine. There's no there's no consequences if I don't. So I'm just going to sit back and not. That's so so. With that being said, I'm like before we you know what little expense it is. I agree it's not that great of an expense. But I still think that we need to have our ducks in a row and say we're going to send this letter out. But you need to be aware that this is what's going to happen. We don't want that to happen to you. Here's these people that'll take care of it. So. Um, we are. We're waiting for the county to come back with. The county should be sending exactly. letters out. And, and I do think David's gonna. No, the county will send letters out as code violations. Right, but the, but David's gonna go through. He's gonna he's gonna. Yeah. He's I, gonna be the I, the, I, the the thorn in their side till we get something. I agree. For dark, there, there's for dark skies, incomplete information at this point. Yeah. For dark skies, though, that's a different issue. Almost all of those people sue in has their contact information because they have homes. It's dark skies uh, that's got a light it's not, connected. Not a lot. <laughs> it's not a vacant lot. So that, that's a different piece of the It's a little easier, it's a little easier yeah. than the other one. And so we don't know what the fines are going to be, but we all know there's pictures in, in the ordinance of how what the thing so, needs to look like. And there's no reason not to tell people now what it is that we do know and tell them you may get a fine. It's a daily fine. We don't know how much it's going to be. It may come. But they're going to enforce the code. And as, as Swin has said, people out here have been weaponizing uh, the code enforcement people uh, against their neighbors uh, based on whatever they It's no way down. Whatever they it's way down. It's just, it's just, we need to get a handle on that. And, and you shouldn't have to have an, an overarching agreement on the vision uh, document uh, on going forward and well, just pulling the trigger and doing the first step. We know that now, but certainly, and we will be working on that. I Christy, think. you had something to say. I was just going to say back on the education of it, this would be something, right now it's bright red, so you can see where it is. So 
you know, we, this is our sixth year, and in the beginning, we didn't know what it looked like. Oh, you mean the peppers the bright, are bright, 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 bright red? Bright yeah, red. They're not. obvious where yeah. they are still, and it might be that's another education issue. Um, I know with new builds and things, isn't there? You have to eradicate as far as you have permit. to get it off. Sure. Um, so maybe for people who've moved into properties existing, um, you know, they just need a little education. And right now, say it's those red, the red berries. <laughs> the red well, berries they're not here. here. Like we said, a lot so, of the people aren't here even. Right. Now, right or they right, don't care. So, right. So speaking to that education thing, and, and I don't know, champion like the organization really stepping up its education efforts is in basic marketing. Someone needs to see a message seven times before it sets in, right? So one email every few months that one time in a year speaks to Brazilian pepper or dark size is not enough messaging. And right? one reason it isn't because we don't have everyone's email. Well, I get that. I get that. And, and, and so there, there, maybe there needs to be other efforts, but I'm just saying it needs to be more, more. often. Okay. Even the website, as good as it is, you would have to go dig to find a lot of info. And so there, there probably needs to be a more modern knowledge base. It's really easy to just type, you know, well, ordinances. Actually, and, you know, it just has our basic core ordinances that, you know, cover um, specific things on the yeah. island stuff. So. Okay. To, to move on, I, I, yeah. and I don't want to cut you off by any yeah. means, but but um, that moves right down, like David said, into nine, which would be our vision and, and where kind of UCCA wants to move um, for 2021. So they, um, or if, if everybody's kind of done with the Brazilian pepper or the, anything, <laughs> I mean, we're, so the, the we're, only, we're, we're also done with it. So I'm like, um, if there's no more questions, I, I said, we've gone forward to- Give me 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Yeah. Sure. 60 seconds. Uh, uh, Melissa uh, Everly uh, had put me in touch uh, with uh, International Dark Skies <laughs> Association. And I was thinking this would be a positive spin, not just they're trying to tell me how, what kind of lights I can use. No, let's let's work towards dark sky and a designation. And actually, for you who rent your houses, it, it can be an attraction because people there are people with their fancy telescopes. They want to go to a place which it's rare, where it's dark, and you can actually use your telescope and see the Milky Way. So that was just something that's positive. And, and Melissa has been trying to use her light meter and check it out and we just need to go from house to house and say okay this is what your light is it's too much okay. all right okay. please continue all right so i'm gonna stand up because i you're gonna paint right, he's gonna stand up he's gonna that window over there everybody yeah. can hear you <laughs> Rich, can you see me and hear me okay? Yeah, no, I hear you fine. I think everybody on Zoom hears everything good. Um, so the, the, the topic on this one is the 2021 vision statement. Um, we put that on the, the website for everyone to read. I hope you've read it. Um, the board in the board meeting that preceded this meeting approved this. So I'm communicating and I'm not just gonna read it to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain the discussion about what, what the point and not just to say we're going to do something, but how we intend to do it. And then I'm going to elicit Rick Nolan to help me out with give some specific examples as he starts up. Okay. Um, so, so the first thing I want to say is that I've lived on the island for about three and a half years, and I've been visiting the island for a very long time. And, and I'm very, I, I, I love the island, I love this community, and I'm very passionate about this topic of. of trying to foster community, um, and UCCA is a part of that, Fire is a part of that, as organizations, there's business communities, um, there's individual residents, there's people that live here permanently, there are people that just own a home here, there are people that don't come very often, and so it's very complex. I mean, it, it's not like your standard over on the mainland community situation. Uh, and it's, I've, I've been on the island and part of this board for two years, and I've listened and tried to learn and understand the history of how things are done or were done and why and people's opinions and how they are. I try to be quiet, generally, and listen more than speak. Uh, 
to, to know what what the lay of the land is. I don't know everything there is to know in that period of time, but it's given me a good flavor for that. And, and as time has gone on, we've gotten to this place where this community seems to be changing because we have new people moving in, there's a lot of new development, new house building. I think the world has changed with coronavirus and social unrest, to be frank. I think people are like fleeing the big cities. So I think that's that there's enough turnover here that some many of the what used to be okay to do or not do because people knew everything because they've been here and they've seen it, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. All these people that are coming in don't have that. And so I think that I've come to the, the, the emotional response, the logical response that now is the time to try to approach things a, a little differently and a little more aggressively. And so what I did was I communicated to the board of, of a vision for 2021 that we are we discussed and talked through. I actually put an action plan together. It was a lot longer and more detailed um, and maybe not for the right start the beginning, but, um, and we, we, I boiled, we boiled it down to these six points that hopefully you guys saw on the website or had access to see. Uh, and I want to explain them if that's okay, because I want, I want you to hear, I, I wanted to, I want to be able to say all the right words. I would love to say, like, you know, some people can do and have this perfect speech and say all the right words. Um, I don't know that I can accomplish that, but I want you to hear my heart. I want you to see inside of me about what, I, what I'm caring about and what I'm saying. David, I don't want to interrupt you here at all. But is there anybody that did not see him? We have some copies here, so you could follow along with, with uh, David. David. Mm -hmm. That's all we have left. I know I'm just going to hold on. But, um, Okay, just in case anybody needs. Okay, go on. Um, so, so the, the intent is for the, the, like I said, the board to use this as the framework for action going forward in 2021. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to wait till 2021, but it means that we have a lot of work to do to get ready to do these things, organize what I'm about to say. And that's that's what I want to say. So the first thing is in the words I use here is, is engagement. And that is, for the board itself to, to work with groups like the county commissioner, who is going to be a new one in January, as I understand it. Lee County Community Development, Lee County Codes, LCEC, Fire District, Island Business Leaders, Safety Harbor. We have to have some connection and relationships formed with these people so that they know when there's a problem like this power thing that went on and people are very frustrated about that, that we can that person will be known by LCC, someone at a higher level, that they will then communicate and be able to say, you know, we, we, we recognize that person. It's just not every, they don't answer the same 500 calls in the call center and answer the same question 50 times about why is this not working. And give us the full spiel. And then if the, that contact of the board then can get it out to the community and interact and say, look, we're representing a certain number of people in this matter. This is unacceptable. Or you guys have did a really good job on this thing. Because what we can't be is the hammer, right, all the time. Because they'll just like stick, you know, listen, we can, we can just go pound sand for all we care because all you do is complain. What we want to do is do it in both ways, have a relationship. So with those groups like Lee County Codes, you know, what I'm not saying is, is that those people immediately, because we establish a relationship, will suddenly say, oh, your 100 votes really matter to me. We're going to snap our fingers and suddenly start pouring money into the, the island. That's not what I'm saying. But the chances of us being collaborative with people like that and having a good working relationship will get us a whole lot further than I think we are when all they hear is the individual calls or complaints to the lower level people. So engagement is a key thing. Now, I'll... I'll We'll talk a little bit more to the how are we going to do that after a while. This is more of the what we intend to do. Second thing is communication. We've talked about it. We've heard Swin say it. We've heard Helen say it. We've heard people say it all the time in all these different matters is that we as the board have to do regular, and I suggest monthly blog posts, information release, posts on the website, email notices about how the news, board efforts, what we're doing, what we've got going on, what we've accomplished, what we haven't accomplished, the efforts we've made, so everybody knows we're at work. Uh, community needs, we can even do things like new member spotlights, those kinds of things that, that begin to draw this community together and inform people. 
and keep ahead of time so they're not surprised by things going on. Now, communication requires a method, a, a way to do it. Sue Ann mentioned one of those things is that before this meeting, I sent out an email that announced this meeting, okay, and, and it goes in our, on, through our website through a, a service that sends out emails, and through that service, I can tell who opened the email, how many did or didn't, and who clicked a link in the email. So in this case, in this email, there was a, there was a link, there are two links in the email. One was to look at the documents for this meeting, and one was a click to register for the Zoom meeting. And so before I came, I looked at that value, and of the 380 people that are active email subscribers to our website, 50% had opened the email. And what I say, 8.4% had actually clicked the link within it. Okay, now, to be fair, there are not 380 individual emails that are members likely, so the fact that the title was the general meeting membership meeting might have led them not to click it as, as frequently as they do the other cases. But as an example, the other email I sent out last week, last week related to the Island Girl cancellation stuff, a higher, like 60% 60, 60 clicked that, that opened that email. So all that says is, is if you didn't get an email, about this, this meeting notice, then you can email, send an email to info at Captain Pacific Association.org and I'll make sure you get on the email list. I'll tell you how to subscribe and make sure there's no spam things going on and all that, that stuff. But we have to have a way to easily communicate with people that they're available and, and if they're needing information, then it would seem like we would get more than 50% of people at the email. And we need to weed that down and make sure that list's right because there are some, we made some assumptions back in the day when we loaded it up. There were some old emails in there. But the system calculates who is, if you don't open your email for six months, it will then call you inactive and take you out of that list. Because if you send emails over and over to inactive people, you get marked as spam in Gmail and other email services that people use. So that, that's the communi that's the communication thing we need to, to do that in an organization. So it's not the website nope. that says, oh, you haven't opened our email, so therefore no. we're going to no. no. Well, the e yeah, there are two parts of that. One, the, the tool that sends out the emails, because it knows that you, it should not send out an emails to people that don't reply, or I'm sorry, that don't open them, that we would then be marked as, the sender be marked as spam. The website take makes them inactive. The website the, their mechanics identifies it as no the, the, the email delivery embark mail oh. would, would choose to, to mark in of uh, the contact at upper cap Pacific Association .org as a spamming entity and will not deliver you emails from it if you never if you do not open it and we keep sending it. Maybe it's more under education. But that's just a matter, that's a normal tool that's on the website that, that that's what companies do this all the time, that, that their systems are designed to do that so that they effectively communicate with the membership. People have to be active and available and then get signed up, so that's all that. Uh, involvement is the next one. Involvement is something that we as the board have, are making a commitment of time and attention, not unlimited time and attention of us board members but also to involve the, mem the membership in planning, problem solving, subcommittees, and planning groups. So that is, all the work that we do cannot be done by the people that sit in the, on the board. There is great value in all of the people that express passion for certain topics. There are people that are interested, like, I want to be a part of solving the road problem. I want to be a part of solving this internet thing, because they know about internet and services and things. And we need to draw them in with a leader from the, the board to lead that group to, to brainstorm ideas and then bring it back to the full group so that we leverage the, the membership, not just put it on the backs of one or two or three people on the board that are doing it. So that requires commitment from the board, um, but it also requires commitment from the membership to participate. Now, what we have to do as a board is prove that we're going to do something, in my mind, with that time so that people don't feel like they're wasting. So we want to do is get that time, get things together, uh, and, and I've 
kind of will propose a way that we then take action on those items, prioritize them, and, and actually take action. Uh, the, the next one is is education. We talked about that two or three times. Mm -hmm. Education of new homeowners, existing homeowners, uh, for things like the the topic we just talked about, like the island pathways, which are not roads, mm -hmm. uh, the, and some other things that impact what we can and cannot accomplish as an island community. Some things. We may have to admit that we can't solve that. Like we can't, we can't demand a county table and tell the county these are roads. You will take the roads, and we don't want that. But we have to acknowledge that we have to try to solve and mitigate the, 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 the damage, the problems that exist. And so we have to do education. And some of that is, as, as Bill Fry talked about a little while ago, some of those are citations in law that says like Lee County tells us this is why you're not, or this is why we won't. Or this is why it don't it doesn't and get that at the hands of people who care and want to know as opposed to just everybody like well why can't we just like have roads or why can't the county come in well, i pay my taxes get, i pay my taxes too i'm just saying we need to educate and that'll help kind of i think bring the temperature down a little bit where there are things that are known uh, and and somebody else had mentioned in our meeting that have been around the aisle a long time you know, how long have we been talking about roads, right? So forever. You know, the roads have been a thing. How many times have we talked about uh, golf carts, so, so golf carts right? <laughs> well, what I'm suggesting is, is that we can be informed by the past, but we cannot be shackled by the past. Because it didn't, we never solved it or can't, didn't come together and have some mitigating ways of doing things in the past doesn't mean we can't do it now. And so I'm saying this is a new day, a different time. It's time to step up and do it and do it all together. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and that it involves education. I talked about things here about like posting things out there, but it's also best practices for, for help for homeowners. Like how do we manage difficult renters? How do we man how, do we do we all agree <clears throat> to chip our carts down for those renters so don't we go so fast? Well, it's not it's one thing is to say that, but how do you do that? And who does that? And what risk is there to gather that information and get it out to people so they know. You, you say your your kids, your renters are dry, doing donuts out there in the thing and wrecking, flipping your cart. Well, did you chip your cart? Well, if they've never heard of that idea before, they wouldn't have an idea what that is. And then they know it's an option. And so we can be a part of informing the community with people that know have done it before. They say, this is easy. You go over here and you tell them this and this is what you say. And they do it. It's 50 bucks or whatever the cost is. At least they'll know. The David, could I... Could I interrupt for a second? I, I don't want to break your stride, but at the end of your presentation here, uh, could I um, support and add to uh, what you've been saying, especially about communication and education? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll wait for your time. Two, more bullet, two more bullet points, and for certain, we need to have input. That's, that's kind of my point to start with, I think. But, okay. Uh, so outreach, outreach, we, we need efforts to contact those new island homeowners. Sue Ann does a great job of that right now, in my opinion. And she's physically visiting them, right? Okay, and that's good. She is the old and, and, welcome and, way. And, 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 that is, and that's, that's good. We need to make sure they have put in their hands tools to know and be a part of the community. They, they have that know. How do they get signed up to the website? We've, we've done as much as we can on the site to make it easy to join as a member. Uh, to be signed up is to get information from the email subscription list. Um, but they, it takes, takes more than that. It takes like being a part of the community, reaching out to them, getting them to feel like they're part of things. <laughs> I think it, there was, you know, all the years I, we, Teresa and I visited for 28 or so years before we moved here. But there was a time, in my opinion, that, that when people came here, they want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. And they just want to be themselves on their little island with their own little self and get out of my face and don't talk to me. I don't think that's the case anymore. Oh, there, I think are still some. There, there are some. There are, there are I, some that still want that. What, what, I, what I'm saying, I think we've reached a tipping point. And maybe there was a time that swung back there wanted to be community because it was small enough we could all get together and have barbecue and have, have, have. Right. It's It swung back for some reason like, oh, wow, this is like everybody's an island. It's time that we become one again, and that is to reach out to those new people and to highlight them and, and to, to make sure they know what they have access to and welcome them in. And, and there's Facebook and all those things. There's many tools to do that, and website and all that, but, but we have to have a commitment to that, and that is to outreach. Now, that's going to require more than Sue Ann being the only one that does it. This is the kind of thing. Now, 
we need to have a plan and how we do it and, and give her the tools. And I'm not saying Sue Ann can't do it, but it's like everything else. It shouldn't be left on the top of some one person as the only person that's okay to do that. You know, we got to get people that, there may be other people, that's their thing. There are people that are social and that's what they, they would they'd be invigorated with a chance to go and meet people and talk to them now. I know we're in the COVID world now. It's a little different. Maybe they do it from, you know, someone's on the porch and they come out and whatever. I don't know, but they, people still are like that. So I think that's what we need to do is that outreach. And that's part of like reaching out for membership because when we get done with this, if we know what we're about and what value we bring as a, as a, and we need to demonstrate that and earn your trust, the membership's trust, then we can communicate to those people, hey, you should sign up for UCCA. If you're part of the community, here's what you, here's the value you get, here's why it's important, here's the projects we're doing or not doing, and here's the things that you can get. We have to be able to say that clearly. So until we do that, you know, it's going to be hard to sell. And she does a great job. I'm not minimizing some of this work, but I'm just saying, we've got work to do. Uh, and last thing, and that's the, the, the thing that wraps it up for me is community, the word community. And like I said, I think we've reached a tipping point and there's a desire for community. Now, I would say that Facebook community can be good, it can be bad, um, and it is a way of community. Um, given right now we're in this kind of like we large gatherings kind of things a little sketchy you know kind of thing we're going to kind of kind of coming down a little bit from that but um, there'll be a day and we can't plan forever to be i don't think socially distanced and never meet again i think this is going to change sometime but we need to be prepared to do build an island family build an island family because we're all in this together and do that through gatherings or events safely right and, but we have to all commit in some way as a membership group or an island community that we're all in this together and we need to work towards some idea that we're all in it together and not try to tear each other down all the time. And, that, and I, the thing that's broke my heart and kept me up at night a lot, in addition to this passion that I feel for this kind of moving forward, is that it breaks my heart to see people at odds on Facebook what seems like constantly, like in, almost in not careless, careless with their words and, and emotions about things that seem to, to, to just cut the legs out from any community thing. Now, what I heard, I've heard this in sporadic moments, and I heard it just a minute ago. I heard, heard AJ talking about Bill Fry in a positive light. Thank you. And Bill Fry did the same. Now these were not these these men in this case were you can you know like I said see my heart. There was no intent to somehow for some ulterior motive. They're honestly complimenting each other for work they appreciated about each other. If if we learn to find and catch each other doing good things and complimenting them, we could build up a lot of stuff. As opposed to the only time anybody says anything is when it's a negative comment about like you didn't you know get off my lawn or whatever. I don't know, whatever. So I think it, it's a it's a collective effort, but I think we have to lead it. I think it comes by leading an example and, and pointing out the good stuff. Because while there's going to be disagreements, and we won't all see the eye to eye ever, that's not the point. And that's the point of this committee. You guys represent you have elected us as representatives of the of this membership to have different opinions and to represent the membership, but to work together to come out with the best that's best for all, not just what's my thing your thing, this other guy's thing. And I think that's where we want to go. That's where I think we're committing to go. That's what we voted to do earlier in the board meeting with this vision for 2021. Thank you. Well, I'm done with that. And well there any questions? Okay, so well well um, yes. let's start with Bob. Robert, he asked Bob, when Bob yes. go ahead. Well, well, thank you, I, I, David. We um, we support everything that you said in, uh, in terms of uh, um, you know building the community and uh, making communication better between all of us. And uh, I hope uh, all of you have uh, been enjoying the issues of uh, the Upper Captiva News, which we are now the editors of. We're going into our fifth uh, issue, and um, it is a part of this puzzle of how. Um, 
people are going to know what's what's good and what's going on and uh, what has happened in the past that's good, what's worth remembering, uh, and what's uh, wh what the key issues are sort of distilled to a degree that um, we are sort of forced to do because we only do three issues a year. Um, what you've described, I think, is excellent for the kind of things that develop uh, day by day, month by month, uh, the blog posts. Uh, that's not what we do. Um, and the blog posts are an excellent way or one of the excellent ways of dealing with that. I even think that the, the homeowner's Facebook page, um, in spite of uh, some of the things that uh, are seen there, it's a it's a way for people to let off steam and um, you know air some of their differing opinions about current problems. But our 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 publication, which is it's we just joined it a couple of years ago. Um, we we uh, picked up the torch. Uh, it's been going on for about thirty years, and I have to say that as Sue as I, Sue and I were trying to decide whether we were going to come down to the island and throw in. Um, that little newspaper really was the continuity that made us think, you know, uh, something good is happening here, something wonderful is happening here, and this thing is being generated by thoughtful, uh, decent people, and they must live on this island uh, and are an important part of the sort of the glue that's holding together the community such that it exists. And you're right, David, there are plenty of people who want no part of it. And um, so be it, that's, uh, that's life uh, anywhere. But um, I, I hope uh, people will continue to realize that we provide a kind of a different uh, take on what goes on on the island, a sort of a, long, a longer view, a, a distillation of not just the year's important uh, uh, stories, but also things that have been going on in this island since uh, people have started living here. And um, so to that end, uh, I'm putting in a plug for a continuation of uh, our, the uh, Upper Captiva News and uh, our, our next issue will be coming up shortly. Um, the notes for this uh, uh, meeting will appear in it. So thank you for your time. I have the copy here and just by chance it says surviving a global pandemic while living on North Captiva Island that was right on the front page. That's right. him. Really? That, that's the man. That, that's the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I love it. Not, not the modern generation, the younger generation may not be as into reading things and holding it in their hands. I am. I love it. And I think you've done a great job, and we want to thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. And, and I hope to continue. I hope the board all feels like that, too. And let me just add that since it's mailed to people, and many of these vacant lot owners, all we got is mail. We don't have email. We don't have a phone number. So the fact that every couple of years, we send it to all okay. property owners. Every other year, it's mainly, mainly just sent to homeowners because they are most likely to respond. But we do attempt to reach just vacant lot owners who don't come to the island. We use the address that we do have from the property appraiser website, and we mail them this letter. So if they were to actually read it, they would know about night skies. They would know about... Brazilian pepper, etc. The membership form is always on the back and too, so we solicit new members. And in fact, we say, please let give, just contact us, give us an email address so we can keep you in the loop. Don't even have to join. Right Christy, you have something to add? Another idea would be for us to have some type of material or packet that the real estate agent mm -hmm. gave to the new buyers, a welcome packet that had UCCA information in it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the newsletters, uh, just informing them that we are here. Well, and it, this so, did. This issue so, also so, did. So, so how this? So how this is exactly? You feel it? Not how you feel it? I feel the energy that's generated right now, right? so because what what people are hearing is. There's going to be a process. There's going to be a way to do this. And now ideas are popping up. Now we grab this person and get them on the, on the committee.
needed to say, <laughs> be careful what you know? <laughs> but, but if people are passionate, excited about things, yeah. they're happy to do those things as opposed to dragging them in there and trying to force them to do it. And then they're excited and they're a part of the community. And so this is where those ideas come. That's why we want to put a framework in place of leads, people from the board, but pull in the community, you know, not the membership, not the community, but the membership to be a part of something that does that work. And, and then every that way we get lots of great ideas that people, it's not like down to nine people trying to figure it out and come to the solution. You know, in, in this issue too, it just like they even have grocery delivery services. That how many people that come out here that are new would not know that you can get grocery deliveries or, or where to go, your mail and all things. That was a, it was a wonderful issue and just really. Well, the houses that I take care of, which are just a couple, but I actually take these and put them in the book to read because. They are rentals, and therefore it kind of gives a little bit of an overview, you know, of what's going what's on. Going so, on or so, so, and, and so, I'm sorry, so let me just uh, clarify. So, Bob and Sue don't think are the board. There's nothing in what I just said that's trying to eliminate or doing away with those kinds of things. Those are at those are all part of the the outreach. I didn't mention it specifically, but that's you know. The newsletter, the, the other things on the website or whatever, those are there's not a, a move to try to get rid of all those things. There may be a there may be a move at some point to be able to deliver them electronically for those who don't want to print it out and get them mailed. But that's, well, that's the newer that's generation. That doesn't change, that doesn't change but that doesn't change the work that they're doing. It's only the delivery method of what we do. And, and right. we will talk about that another time. But anyway, that's that's not to say we're trying to go back. Or can I just say on on there, I'd like to mention if you can <laughs> if you have time put something in here about the Brazilian pepper removal so well if this is all going and it kind of covers two two parts of the job that you're doing. I think everything that took place at this meeting is probably going to be in the next issue which is going to go to press it, the it's hard to hear it. hear it. can't hear it all right we'll get closer to your microphone we always put this issue out right after one of these meetings. Yes. So that the information and so what went on in the meeting will be in the next issue, which will come out in about two weeks. So the three issues come out, you know, after each meeting that we have. So it will always include the information that is discussed at the meeting. Okay. Uh, but our articles are, you know, they're not, not three sentences. They're sort of in-depth stories. A lot of them are about nature because that's partly what attracted us so much to the island. Uh, and we're the editors, but we don't, we don't want to have to write the whole issue ourselves. So we want to encourage any of you who want to write about some wonderful experience that you have had on the island or some anything that you would like to contribute either even a poem or maybe you've taken a great photograph um we include full color photographs so this this is this is your newspaper it's not just us writing it we, we would welcome anything that you would like to put in it too there's going to be a long story about uh the turtle research this year which has gone particularly well uh, and we always include an article about um one family living on the island, so you get to know somebody. But everything is is upbeat and positive and um, upper you know, cap even at its cap best. Even, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Now we're going to move on. Okay. Okay. So, uh, when you, yeah, I have a few things to sort of unpack from from this vision. I, I sat through the board meeting that happened right before the meeting. You guys were discussing this vision, and there was definitely, you know. Uh, a few that you know were unsure of, of championing this. Apparently, you guys had talked about this before. Um, basically, you know, saying, "Well, this is just repeating what what we already do and have done." And, and I would speak to that over the years that the organization probably has done a lot of this. But I would I would challenge that over the last five years, much of this has not been done. And, and it has slipped. I mean, it's just, you know, the, I, I get, you know, I sent an email to the board that I, I know probably ruffled some feathers and stuff, but it's about accountability and 
looking at our island and what the need is for our island, the island is screaming for a group to stand up and to represent. And I tell you, I've been a homeowner, I've been vacationing here for 11 years, been a homeowner for five years, have two homes here, I have a new property. I'm here, I'm gonna be here. And I don't feel represented by this organization very well. Um, speaking to, like in the bylaws, you're supposed to have four meetings a year, you have three. You know, the, the minutes haven't been updated on the website, you know, for years. You have last year's. I get it, too. I, I, I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's okay, but it speaks to, it shouldn't all rest on Sue Ann. The organization as a group should step in and go, if Sue Ann needs help, then we should help her and other board members should, should step up. So all of this vision is so needed, but this board, and I agree that, that, Property owners, homeowners, members have to step up and also be accountable. That's why I actually do Champion David's sort of spoken wheel approach. You have these different things. And it's like you have a board member in charge of it. You engage how many? Three, four, five, you know, members to be maybe on a subcommittee. But most of this stuff isn't done. It's like, you know, in the bylaws, it says to serve as a conduit to county and state government. How many meetings have we had with, you know, our county, our county commissioner, anyone over the last five years? And it's not in the minutes. You go back through the minutes that are available, it's, you talk about the access fund, you talk about Brazilian pepper, there's a fire, you know, update. There, there's not the bigger thing. Maybe five years ago, that wasn't as needed, but this island is definitely changing. More houses being built, younger families, that are going to be full-time residents. Uh, obviously, we all deal with the uh, outlier renter problems, whether it's you know the golf carts or uh, obviously down on Butterfly Shell this this week. You know you have domestic sort of violent stuff going on. Um, there are a lot of challenges to this island, and even in UCA's tax returns, it, it basically states you know list four of you, the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, two hours per week on average committed, right? So that would be collectively four people, 468 hours a year, or if we're doing all nine um, board members, uh, over a thousand, or close to a thousand hours put in just by the board members per year. I would challenge that does not happen. So, you know, two hours average a week. And I'm not saying that you have to have it as a job, but if you say you're gonna put in two hours a week, put in two hours a week, or it's not that much. Um, so I fully, you know, champion this vision. I question if it can get done because it's gonna take work. And there's two things that the island needs to commit to. And it's not just on this board, but it is on the membership. You gotta put in time and or money. And if you're not committed to do that, I get it. If, as, as an organization, if you do outreach and you get silence, what can you do? But I, I've been here, you know, a long time. No one from this board reaches out to me. Sue Ann, we're friends, you know, but she doesn't reach out to me as as the upper board going, "Hey, we want your input. Or we're doing this and like that." I get one. Two. I got your, I got your notice and told everybody Sue Ann is running for office. <laughs> I know, or not for office. I know, but, for the but you know, it's like it's like there's just not a whole lot of, of interaction between the board and the membership. It's it's one way. It's you know, it's an email or a blog post. It's not enough. And there, there's, there is a great need of education. And I would also challenge that, that that education that comes from the organization needs to be truthful. You know, the, the, the sign saying that you have to be a 16 and a licensed driver, it's untrue. You have to be four. They're not our signs. Well, I get it. I get it. But in, they, anything they, that comes out. Have, those do not have UCC on them. We, okay. We've never, we've never done that. Yeah. Anyway. But, we know. You know, I think a lot of it comes down to the education um, part of it, and we need to educate um, property owners who rent, right? You know, Dave, Dave and I talked, you know, the, the whole chipping down cars. My carts are chipped down. We have very few issues because it is not fun to drive our car. It's like everyone <laughs> I'm pulling over to let everyone pass because they're slow. Um, but there's a lot of education that can happen for us to self-regulate, and that's what we want, right? 
We don't want to be calling the sheriff on each other. We don't want to be calling, you know, code enforcement on each other. That's ridiculous. We, we have got to come together as a community, educate our community on what we are and how things are and the things that you will never be able to do, right? We're not going to enforce things on our roads because they're not roads unless we want to give up over to the county, which would be a horrible idea, ownership of our pathways to make them public roads, that'd be an awful thing to do. It's just never going to happen. So uh, I stand behind this. I, I would challenge the board to step up and, and make this a true reality every day, every week, every month of a year. So like, do you think a renters group, like a subcommittee of totally, uh, they could yeah. be group together? Yeah. I, I, I think a, a member, a group of members who are homeowners who rent coming together, helping, you know, flesh out ideas to draw people in it. Right? You know, that's it. people from, you know, the, the noise issues that have happened, yeah. you know, over the summer and, you know, the card issues, a lot of this stuff, we're not going to solve it. We, we will not it solve like it hundred percent, but it, it is, yeah. can we improve it? So, so, so let me help. <laughs> What I think is I propose the framework, and it's more than a vision, it's the thing behind it. I would suggest that we solve or to try to address these these the coordination of all this stuff, right? In a way that I've done for most all of my work career. And I'm willing to lead it if we want to, it's done. This is not about a position within the board, it's about like, facilitating a solution. Somebody's got to like manage. The, the lieutenants that are assigned the committees, but we do that thing in a way, and then I'm going to get Rick to, to give some examples of what we've already talked about as, as a board to, to use as a starting place. But to do that is to form those committees and then have a way that we identify all the stuff that's out there for every everything to be done. We prioritize that list. Now, not everybody's going to agree because some, to some people recycling is going to be ahead of uh, golf cart problems, whatever, I, that we're going to do the best we can to prioritize them. But then we'll have committees and people working on all that stuff without the board having to be involved every day all the time and spend all the time with people that are passionate about it, pulling it together, and then put it in and decide as a board, we're going to work on these three things right now, top three priorities that everybody agreed on. And if one of those things gets stopped because some guy at the county doesn't reply or whatever it is, we'll put it in a, in, a, in a status that's blocked and we'll pull the next top priority and start working on it. But people have already been working on it all the time, so it's not sitting there waiting for the top thing to get solved. Are we going to solve Brazilian pepper? Well, let's do nothing else until we solve Brazilian pepper. No, <laughs> we can't do that. We can manage all the groups doing things at the same time. And it, and, and it sounds scary. <laughs> sent kind of a kind of a robust plan to the board and, and to be fair it's without in an email it's scary if you've not executed it with people and seen to deliver results to people and tell membership or your what we call stakeholders in, in the other world the work world what we're doing and what we've solved and we've had these contacts with this the state and we've done all these things join does work no one knows about so in does work, no one knows about. Now that's not shaming in a buddy in here, but it's it, it it needs to be communicated because we're in a world that that we're at a place right now, a deficit of trust, in my opinion, uh, of this board, and we need to prove it by documenting those things, not to toot our own horn, but to show that there is progress being made and there's work being done and what that is. And so my kind of closing remarks, I'm gonna hand it off to Rick for the more the practical stuff, but is this is not a board vote, I mean, sorry, not a, a membership vote or anything, but it's simply just letting you know what our intent is for the next year. Uh, elections are coming up. This board is the one, the existing people have committed to support it. That doesn't have anything to do with what will happen because there may be new members at the beginning of the new year. Those people hopefully will be in line with this agreed upon vision and be a part of that if there is, if there's changeover anyway. Um, but we need, we need to have some amount of time to prove it will work. In, in, in the new world of doing business, you fail fast. And that sounds negative, but it means if you try something new and it's not gonna work, realize it very quickly before you've expended a lot of time, energy, and money into it, 
before you adjust it. And so that's what our goal is to do that, is to, to ask for your permission to launch off on this and try to accomplish it. And that will require your help. Rick, Rick has some details of, of kind of a starting place with committees and how that might be organized. So I'll let him talk about that. Bill, did you have a question? Well, I, I I think I'll hold it till you do your thing because because mine was, was more about what are your next steps and what's your uh, timeline uh, to, sh to show the first steps. Hey, Rick, do you name my input for any of this? Okay. I'm going to have to step out of your desk. Rick, is it alright if I take it? Or do you need it? So I'll, I'll hold my question until you finish. Thank you. Before I came down here, I worked for about five years on the board of a nonprofit in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I learned a couple of things. One is that uh, you can only do a few things. You can't do everything. You can do 100% of 10 or 10% of 100, and it's pretty obvious which way you want to go. Second thing is that with a nonprofit, with a uh, volunteer, an all volunteer organization, there's a finite amount of time and energy that anybody can put into it. <coughs> and I guess there's maybe a third thing too, and that's consistency. Earlier, Bill and AJ, who differed about a lot, talked about the road work. And as someone who's a relative to come to the island, it's pretty obvious to me that a lot of people have tried to work on the road, but what is working for the roads right now is consistency. Basically, AJ's champion it, and Mark, and what they're doing is sometimes going ahead and uh, begging forgiveness rather than asking permission, but they're getting things done. It's not too easy to craft a vision. It's a hell of a lot easier to do a vision than it is to make a budget. If we're going to do anything, we need to start now. We need to have commitment. We need to have consistency to do it. What you have in your hands is the first cut of thinking about things that we can organize. Okay. And individual members of the board will take responsibility for some of these buckets. For example, the communications David, in terms of the uh, safety security, I would pick up what he's already started with his outreach to the county. But it's not just a singular thing, it's being in front of the people as often as you can get to them so that they know there's somebody here, so that they know there's somebody they can talk to, and finding out where the levers are inside these organizations that actually make the damn things work. Because we could spend a whole lot of time talking to people who are just going to be really nice to us and we get absolutely nothing for. It's also a matter of trying to sort out what, and this is what David just said, can actually be done in our lifetime. It may be that we're not going to be able to do some of the things we want to do. So we haven't got a priority list right now. Everybody in this room has a priority list, and it's all going to be different from everybody else's priority list. We can live with that at this moment. We can't live with it forever. But it is too soon to say we're going to do one and two and three and four and five things and commit to getting them done, or at least very well started in 2021. What we are doing as a board is committing to the membership that what we will do is put our time and effort and energy into defining what things we think we can actually have an impact on and trying to get enough context for it so that we don't waste our time spinning our wheels going in a direction that will not give us any results. The idea of sending a letter out on the Brazilian peppers is a good one. It's a better idea to wait one more time to see if we can get the county to move. And if they're not, that's fine. We could go ahead and send out an insufficient letter, which is better than nothing at all. But it's also better to try to get the information that our clients need get to them in one time. There's a lot of other things that are like that. Communication. What do we do about dark skies? This, that, and the other thing. How do we talk to people about the renters? How do we tell people that we're here and that you ought to join us if you want some representation in this island? So we are starting. We have commitment from the board to work. We have commitment, I think, from the membership that if we don't work, they'll replace us. And that's fine, too. We're all volunteers. Nobody's getting paid here, you know? What we're going to do is reach out to the businesses on the island, 
for a big stakeholder for going to reach out to the other organizations on the island who are big stakeholders too, which include the fire department and particularly safety harbor club. And we're going to try to find one voice for our island, and we will know by the end of next year whether we were successful or not. We have not talked within the board a specific timeline for these three committees to come back and make recommendations on what we do. But I would say that if we don't have it done by February, we're in trouble because we'll be behind the eight ball and we'll never get in front of it again. That's it. Questions? So, so that's a good start, I think, on an implementation plan. Um, I sat in the board meeting as, as well, and, and uh, it seemed that that uh, David was pulling a few teeth to try to just get folks to agree to let this part of the presentation occur. And so, in my mind, the, the things that need to be done by the January meeting, you have to set timelines and milestones uh, on a project to show positive movement. So, from my perspective as a member, I believe by the January meeting, if not sooner, we need to know of these six or of these three, who are the individual board members that are the champions and the leader of that proposed group of subcommittees to accomplish that? Because I didn't get the feeling uh, sitting through the board meeting with, with about, uh, well, almost everybody was here. I, I didn't get the feeling that, that there is that real buy-in yet from, uh, from the uh, board itself. I, I, so I, I, know. I really disagree with that because I think the board, my, my opinion is all of the board has bought into this. We, we all have. 100%. And, 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 and you'll demonstrate that by showing of uh, these six uh, exactly. initiatives, who is the, the key stakeholder, the key champion on the board that's responsible for making, uh, gathering uh, volunteers beyond subcommittees, starting to set individual milestones for things. Uh, but it would seem to me by January, by the January meeting at the latest, we ought to know who the champions are for these six things. Or yes. three. Second, uh, from at the January meeting, uh, recognizing that you're just starting, David mentioned that he's got, that he created a, an action proposal or an action plan. That plan is the next step that the board needs to uh, discuss and approve. Uh, to set a roadmap for how you're intending to go forward, which includes those stakeholders and asking for volunteers and setting milestones so that once that's done, you can present that to the board. And that's your first concrete steps forward, I believe. Here, I disagree. You're certainly right that uh, people on the board have to be committed to each of these first cut looks at these three projects. We did discuss that and we do have a commitment. We don't have it from everybody because not everybody was in that meeting working meeting, an informal meeting. This is more so. And we have to have it by January. So, okay, I'm with you there. Where I'm not with you is that we'll have the whole plan fleshed out and ready. I didn't say a whole plan. I said a starting point for your action. And I don't see the difference. I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you have to solve world hunger uh, by January. What I'm suggesting is, is that you had to have some kind of a framework that the board has agreed to for each of these six uh, focus areas and who's going to be the champion for those and how you're going to ask for volunteers and how you're going to start working. So far, you haven't provided anything to the members. We only saw the action list or the, uh, the goal list uh, yesterday afternoon. So I saw it last night when I got back to the island shopping. But my, my point is, is that if you don't create a roadmap of where your starting point is and milestones along the path to get there, um, any anything that you do gets you along some kind of a path or some kind of progress, but it may not get you the end point that you and the rest of us would like to see. So we, we can disagree about that. I don't think would disagree with that. My point is this. The patient is an aspiration. It is something that you're going to work towards. It is not a strategic plan. And you can't take a vision and say, okay, we're going to take this word and that word and the other word, and we're going to say, this is, this is what we're planning. The vision says that's where we want to be. What I just guys got is our first cut at focus areas. And we do have commitment from some members of the boards to work in these areas. 
by January, we'll have a little more knowledge and we'll be able to say this is not probably going to happen and this probably is. And we're thinking about something else here. But the focus got to be on a few things, not a lot. And it does take commitment from people who don't have enormous amounts of time or don't want to devote enormous amounts. Few things, not many. It won't be all six things in the vision, but the vision will drive everything else that we do. I look forward to January. I, I, I think, you and, know. Well, I, I just want to, what was kind of to me overlooked was this is our vision for 2021, and we, we, we really do want to implement it and move forward on it. And then come the end of 2021, we want to look back and say, where were we successful with these? Where do we need improvements? And so we do, this is our vision for 2021. We want to move forward, not like, of course, not with, I mean, everything is not going to be addressed with boom, boom, boom. We're going to, this was more of a, what we think are the highlights where we need to start. That's and our focus area. The focus, and, exactly. And to take those and distill them down to a few, two or three exactly. things that we say exactly. that we really got to so, so I would speak to, you know, great starting point. I, I would suggest that um, a member survey needs to go out, and, and really an island-wide survey if you can. If you go back and you study the UCCP, right, and, and back in 2007 to 2009 when it was kind of, you know, doing its thing and, and working with the county to become the, go ahead, UCCP. Yeah, the, upper, the Upper Captiva Community Panel. So if you go back to those days and you research and you get the all the data off the county website and the 78 pages of surveys and everything that were done back then most of them are the same things we're talking about today but we're you know i'm team years later there should be a survey of the membership <coughs> of what the problems are right you guys are assuming these are are the ones and, and you're probably right but there should be a survey because, as you said, everyone's got their different list. You need to define what, what everyone views as the problems and then divide them up into, well, these things are actionable and these things are educational because these things are never going to get solved. And we just have to put this in an education budget bucket over here. And you're right. Focus on the one or two big things that the organization can maybe get done in a given year. Some of the things are not realistic either that people would like to do. Well, yeah, but, 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 but then that, that's, that's the educational yeah. part of like, hey, this is a non starter and, and as an organization, because we feel we cannot move this, we're not even going to try, right? Um, but that's the educational part, so people know, you know, what can and can't be done. And, and if they don't buy the idea that it's it can't be done, there's your volunteer to go let them about pound their head against the wall to see if they can move the ball. I, I have a Karen, question. Yeah, I have a question. Um, was this voted on by the committee? Yes. Was, was it unanimous? Yes. Yeah, about okay. the board, you mean. About the board. By the okay. board. Yes. Yes. By the board. Is, yes. Well, you said something, you don't have unanimity among the board members. What was no. that about? What I said was that we didn't have everybody present in a working meeting. And in that working meeting, we were trying to say, what area do you want to do? So, for example, they put communications, which is, you know, a natural thing. Or uh, me, the safety and uh, security. And you know, I say, that's going to be- You're one talking one about one. this document here. Yeah, I am. Okay. Is there anybody on the board that didn't support this? No. No. I was just concerned about you said there was not unanimity. No, that was I didn't that quite was understand. Yeah. That, that, was, that, was, that, that was no cry that was in front that. That's, that's why I interjected and said, really, I mean, I spent a lot of time in the board, in the working meeting and the board meetings. And to my knowledge, our board is in 100%. Okay. Yeah, just, 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 just for example, I, I volunteered for outreach because I was already doing okay. it. I will do better. Yeah, Carrie, yeah. just, there is, just so you know, just because I was here during the board meeting, no one said they didn't want to do it really the hesitation where a couple of people weren't sure they needed to do it because they felt that the bylaws, that this is what we already do. No, no, I wouldn't even agree with that. I just okay. said, and, 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 and I'll take on that response, but I just said to David that, that I've been on the board for a while, as has Sue Ann, there's really 
to me has always been basically our vision, whether we've implemented it well or not, is probably, I don't think the vision really has changed much from, at least for me, it hasn't from, from the day I first was on the board. This basically is our vision. I said, I want to thank David for putting it in black and white because I think it's going to hold us more accountable to it. Um, and, and that, and so if that if someone misunderstood that about me, about whether I agree with it or not, that would absolutely not. I've always agreed with it. Um, and I think we will. And, and I think we've all, as a board, have agreed on. I, I appreciate that clarification. Okay. Okay. That, that was that. Okay. Concern. So, yes. Yeah. We can do a survey. We can ask people, you know, what their their priorities are. Um, I would say there's a the logical the part of me that wants to say, yeah, of course you would do that. Why the hell wouldn't you do that? Well, I'll give you two reasons why you wouldn't do it. First, it's kind of already been done. Bill did a survey very unofficially on a website, and, and he came back with some of the things that you're looking at there, you know, internet and some other stuff. I have inbred in me a very strong bias for action. I don't want to do any more surveys. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> you know, we've, we've talked about it. We've come to unanimity. We are agreed. And I think that what we ought to do is say, right or wrong, we've got a couple of areas here that we want to pursue. Let's get some people assigned to them. Let's find some information out about them. Let's make a quick sort of what we're going to do you know, really go after, report it out in January, ask for help, and let's go do it. But let's stop with the talk. The story and the story. Yeah, well, I, I completely cool. agree with that. Like, <laughs> taking because, action. Yes, and, and I think that's that's kind of, I think, as the board, that's where we kind of decided we just need to change has come into the island. We need change as a board. We need to, uh, we need, you know, we need to, to, move on with the change that's come to the island to the best that we can and so you know it was kind of the same way i said about the island access line. we keep talking about the same things over and over and as a board that's actually our privilege to move forward and um if you don't like that then your action is kick us off the board and get on yourself <laughs> and so that's i mean if, with the least amount of words that's just what it comes to and i think as a board we are really ready to move forward the, the, the one thing I would speak to was mentioned or the thing missing from this is I really think uh, that the organization should should have an arm that is communicating with and, and has a board member assigned to it and, and a subcommittee dealing with property owners and, and all the issues um, that revolve around that. And if you'd consider uh, maybe after the last two weeks in the infrastructure group, putting LCEC, because that problem seems to continue to get worse and worse. Yeah. yeah. I, would, well, that, I would like to take on that task. That, that, that's that's oh, good. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, no, that, once, that, we, that definitely goes into in that safety and security in the. No, it's an it, it is, but it, the leak kind of relationship. So that's that would be part of that. So, so you, yeah, can, that's you can label the, the original discussion that I put forth was labeled infrastructure, but we combined a couple in the safety mm -hmm. security. So it gets okay. the name, but it's yes, the, 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 those relationships are the key. Yeah. LCEC, I, I would ask that you put that yeah. somewhere on your list. We had in we one had, of those three groups. We had, after we had the last vision, we just omitted it on that time. We did. Right. We, he just put in parentheses commissioners and sheriffs. He could have put LCEC. I'll put it in there. Because it should get I Brian. Can we jump in here and ask an extremely oh, stupid so question? Okay. okay. We we kind of really need to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can can we ask a really dumb question? Uh, we're up here in New York and we've kind of lost lost the thread, but the gentleman in the lime shirt that just spoke is from Ohio. What is your name, sir? Oh. Me? Oh, yeah, you sir. Sure. Rick Dolan. Rick, well, okay. That, we, we, we deduced it might be you, but I, I the, this picture of you guys is, is not too revealing. It, it, you, oh, for sure. <laughs> if your shirt is lying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, okay. <laughs> Rick Dolan. 
That's correct. Mr. Nolan, thank you. Um, Okay, ready. we are ready right. to move on. Okay, now, um, Sue Ann, we did discuss catching up the minutes on the website. You, yeah, that was the You're looking at the board. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here. I, we, we, I, no, that was okay. mine. We're right now on the island, island access, access fund. fund. Okay. So I'm going to speak again about the island access fund. Uh, um, was there anybody that was not here in the board meeting so you really heard no, 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 there's several okay you were not Same in the board meeting, meeting. Yeah. okay so we have an island island access fund with a hundred and one thousand three hundred and eight dollars and ninety three cents in it that money is not accessible to the board to be spent on anything other than buying a dock or an access way for the island there's a lot of history behind it um we, as the board, through the membership, really, have deemed that that the money, there's really not even enough money to buy an island access fund, but more so than that, there's not the need for it anymore. That was a fund that started in 2012 when Island Girl was sold privately. Um, Brian didn't even have his ferry then. A lot of extenuating circumstances and people were fearful that they would not have a way, those that didn't have a boat nor a dock would not have a way on and off the island. And that's where that fund originated. Yeah, uh, there is a bigger point. And it was that because the scanners were wanting to sell Barnacle exactly. restaurant, that they were told by a lawyer, well, you know, it could inhibit a buyer if you've got a contract with with uh, the Upper Captiva Civic Association where they are paying for three parking places and for <laughs> Island Girl access, I mean, excuse me, Island Girl to be able to land there. And they canceled that. They canceled it and informed Island Girl for legal purposes. You may not use our dock anymore. Now they continued to allow them off the record, off the books, whatever. But that way, if a buyer said, wait a minute, you've got this restriction on it, allowing this Island Girl charters to land here, and we don't want to buy something, that you've got a contract out to do that. So they said, no, nope, Island Girl, you may not use us anymore. That's why Island Girl then proceeded to buy property. But that was the main thing, because people who didn't have a membership where they could land at NCIC or could land at Safety Harbor Club, then they really did depend on Barnacle's dock for the landing of any other entity. And that was the biggest push. So, sorry. That's okay. No, that, that is history. There's probably more yeah. in-depth yeah. in history yeah. on it too. But the bottom line is um, the board cannot use the, the money is, is in a fund in a money market fund that is not accessible to be spent on anything other one unless a membership vote is taken to release that money into the general fund now with that being said in the april board meeting that we had in april we as a board decided that we would take a vote by the membership to release that money into the general fund. And that meeting was canceled due to COVID. Right. So we are moving it forward to take a vote of the general membership to move that money into the general fund. And we'll have to explain exactly again now. You know. I would rather just field questions on that. Yeah, I've got we, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yes, um, I've, got, I've got several, so. Um, Several questions. Yeah. Do, do you want me to? Yeah. Talk? Yes. Go ahead. So uh, I, I guess first, when you say a vote of the membership, where are the bylaws, or where does it say only the membership who is at the meeting? If you say the general membership, there are way more members. Just like if you had to do a change to the bylaws, it has to be. I would assume the entire membership is polled uh, on that vote. 
So I, I don't see anywhere in the bylaws. I don't know if there is a different document um, for when the Island Access Fund was started that, that speaks to that. Um, so Bill, you leave a comment well, on that? Yeah, I actually have a suggestion to the board before you call for this membership to vote is that it was it was voted on uh, as a survey by the members. There were three or four options uh, uh, for how to spend the money, how to segregate the money, and what it's to be used for. And that was done by an election buddy uh, kind of vote. And my suggestion is, is that it, it kind of piggybacking on what Splint has just said, I think it's inappropriate to call for a vote of membership of the few folks that are here today. I think it should be put uh, either as a question on a separate election buddy vote or put it as uh, a question on the membership vote when they vote for the three new board members. I, 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 Either I, way works. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's possible, but my thought was also there on that. I think that if we're going to do an election buddy, buddy, buddy vote on that, we should. But um, there, the original that went out for the polling of the membership, that was just not really how they wanted that spent just suggestions so that's what that polling did and it and it was just it got very complicated about well there are too many people that think too much too many other things about that um the money should be spent here for that and there for that and with that being said we see we can't get the money released because too many people it's too many things whereas the what really needs to happen is the money just needs to be it just needs to be, do you want it released, yes or no? And, we, we, and, and that should be the bottom line of the question on the membership. If you want the money released into the general fund so that... Yeah. Not how it's spent. So that, so that it even has the possibility to be spent by other things. If you don't trust, and, and that's what it comes down to, that's what I said before. If you don't trust the board to make those decisions for you, then the money's going to sit in that fund. As long as um, you have some, some kind of a paragraph that says what you mean about liberating the money is a majority vote of the board members to spend every single dollar any way the majority wants. That would, yes or no? Right. Well, that, I'm, I'm, that is what the, that's that's what fun. the money is in. I mean, and if you really go back and look at yeah, the, the expenditures of the general fund over the years, it kind of stays right on about the same base. I mean, it doesn't fluctuate in that and nobody's been because the, the, the board doesn't spend that much money. I mean, you know, we run about a $25,000 um, asset in the general fund and we spent, you know, money for the roads here or signs for the road, few things like that. So there's not great expenditure. And I don't think the board is going to stand up and do something extravagant without asking the membership either but with that being said I, I agree it needs to be in there yeah I, it just runs a little counterintuitive and maybe it's just the the entrepreneur business man in me it's like you know uh, when i go to you know get funds you know, a proposal has been put forward you know request for procurement you know goes in and it's like I I, I I sort of disagree with just a blind let's take it from this let's just put it in general fund and then figure out later what to spend it on it's like I think, hey, if there's something that, that we, hey, we want to spend $33,000, we'll give it to the fire district to, to go to roads, then put that, like, hey, we want to we want to get 33000 from it, and it's for this, and, and I'll vote yes and everything. So it just, I don't really agree just blindly putting in a fund um, without a reason. But I, I, I come from a different there, but that's always way. been the problem is there can't there seems to be no agreement on the reasons for it and so nothing ever gets done and it just keeps sitting and I don't really care I mean as far as I my opinion on it is it just keeps sitting in the okay, island so, so, access fund and there it sits so and I'm everybody seems to be complaining about us having all of this money sitting in a fund but we can't get people to agree on what to do, on what to do with it. But what's wrong with that? So, 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 wait, what's, that's the point. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Because until it gets put into a general fund. No, what's wrong with it sitting in the segregated fund? Well, we're criticized so, for it. We're criticized <laughs> for it. So we're not spending, we can't so, spend the money for anything. So wait, so is there no agreement between the 
board on what it should be spent on or the no, members? We have no, not voted on what it should be spent on. We never well, dealt but, with but, it. You're, but you're saying there's no agreement between the board on what to spend it on. No, no, no. no, no we, we haven't not. discussed it. We haven't the discussed first it. Wait, why can't because... you discuss it before asking for the money? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> We're not asking. We want it just because we want to spend it all now in one project. We do not. I, I, know. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. But, but what you're doing is asking to, to you know, repatriate the funds with without a vision on what you're gonna so, so you so what, want us to say okay here 25 on this 25 on this 25 on this you know what it can, why, it, why? A, a, a general vision of it i mean just like this general vision for 2021 it's like why you know is it roads is it it community you, you, projects you, you, you go pay to you know have all the brazilian pepper taken off for everyone so it's not an issue I mean, what, say, what is it I asked you, aj i said aj would you want UCCA to give you $100,000 for roads. You, know, you could really do a big project. He said definitely not. Right. Excellent. Number one, they can't they can't manage that, that quickly. And besides that, they believe, as we all should believe, that all taxpayers, all property owners should participate in the roads, and they only through taxes. Donations won't work. UCCA members won't work because it's not everybody on the island. So therefore, AJ doesn't want us to just bombard him with a big chunk of money. Right. So the, the thing is, like, just from the board right now, pick something you would spend it on. What, what would you spend it on? No. You can't. We don't know yet. Right. Right. So, so oh, why, but, why, but, why, it's, like, it's, like, it's like me going with the list of priorities, and then we will know what we want. It's like me going to a bank and going, give me a hundred thousand dollar loan, and then going, well, well let me know, see your business let me, plan. Swin, let me tell you why I want to put out there, just as David said, and let him say, you know, here's here's the facts about the island access fund. It needs to be put into the general fund. It needs to be released from the access fund into the general fund so that it can be used on community projects. We have none in mind. We want the money released into that so that we can in future start doing that. That to me seems to be the number one step. If the membership does not allow that and they're like, no, nope, we don't want to do that, then I'm, I'm like, I'm really good with saying, okay, it can sit right in the island access fund. Let, let it stay Why there. It? Wait, let it stay there. It can stay in the island access fund. And then when the membership, all the membership people cannot come back and say, Why are you sitting on that money? If, if we've agreed on the 2021 vision plan, why can't this these funds be used to implement the 2021 vision plan through membership, through the uh, election of the committees? Oh, I'm willing to put that in there to release it. I, I agree. Focusing on these on subjects. And that, that a so, percentage of the money will be spent, you know, after further, uh, you know, research into these. So areas. I just want to ask one question. So I've been a member of five years. Show me one communication that the board has sent me asking, do you want to spend this money on an access, community access as it was intended or something else? I have never gotten that communication. Show it to me, please. Do you, do you know that the community really doesn't want access? Because there were issues during the spring of, of you know, people being banned from the NCIC docks or other docks and, and general captains and all that we would love to be able to land at a, a, a community dock with some liability insurance for her and her or me or whoever. I, I, I see a need for a community dock. People were banned from land. Yes. yes. So I, I'm all right. sorry. So, so, if, club, so I, if you I, want I, to, uh, so Bill wants to say something. Bill, no, no, she's talking. Well, he, no, he'll no, let I, you talk. Go ahead, Bill. I think you. The only what I've heard you say just now, and what I heard you say during the board meeting, I may have misunderstood what you're saying. What I heard, what I've heard is, is that first you want to do a membership vote, thankfully by I think election buddy. Uh, which is, I think, a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and if they vote no, then you're happy not to do anything. And I think you're putting the, the horse behind before the cart. Well, my, wait, deal, wait, my, wait, wait. my deal is, my thought is, is that if 
something on that, that uh, vision document, something on that action plan actually gets to the point where you want to spend $10,000 to do some specified thing, that's the point to run an election buddy election to say, this is how we want to spend 10,000 of the hundred thousand dollars, not put a hundred thousand dollars into the general fund. Because if you, if you don't do it that way, if you don't put what is the project no. first and then ask for a single project, not, not 50 different projects or not asking a survey for a hundred different ideas. But when you as a board, five of you have decided this is what you want to spend that money on. That's the point to put, put some background and put the question to a vote by election buddy. It costs a hundred dollars, $150, I think to run the election, not to run an election to say, do you trust the board to, to put this money into the general, your words okay. into the general fund? Yes or no, and if it's no, then we'll never do the anything money with money at all. The money cannot be split. That's not true. To, the well, money needs to tell the money is in, and so. It's a transfer. If, if that's where the membership needs to be pulled, do you want, yes, you want it, and, and by people saying no, then what they're saying is just what's one said. I think the money should stay there. I think there maybe needs to be an access point for the island and so that's why it stays in there if that is if if you don't believe that anymore then you would say no i want the money released and put somewhere else to do further projects it it if we can't pull it and say we want to take twenty thousand dollars out for this from an island access fund that can't be done it either needs it, it because it has a, it has I agree you. it had a it, in there for it had a specific right. point that it needed to be spent for an island access. So it's either you would, you want to vote yes, I want to keep it there, or no, I think there's not a need for an island access point anymore, and that money needs to be spent on community projects. And and not necessarily only one, and not that's what all at once. Right. And there's probably two different camps. There's probably people who do still really feel we need a private or an it's island right. access. Okay. So, okay. and I think we found that out during this whole quarantine period. If you don't want to have to rely on private companies. So if you want your groceries delivered from a particular person that doesn't go through the club or, you know, then there's nowhere for them to, to, Meet us to give us our our. I goods. heard something to that. Well, wait a minute. Angles. I I I'm I'm always thought that Island Girl is a public company now. That is not private. Well, even if it you is don't not private, have to so. rely on them and, and their scheduling. Island or Island Girl or a ferry service. You know, if you want an access mm -hmm. without. Your, your hands are sort of tied. You want a private captain to land. Or a private yeah. captain, or a yeah. fishing charter. Or, you know, there's fishing charter people that can't come in um, to, so there is still I, I a need, and okay. I think there is I, a person. I, I, yeah, I, th I think you'd find more support for an island access than what you think. Then good. That, that was what so that, that might be a good way. That's but, why I, that was why it was either, that's where it comes down to. It's right. either yes, right. you want to keep it as an island access fund, right. Or no, you don't. Right. And there, there, I See, honestly, I, I, I really this. don't know the right. feelings out there on that. And right. but all I, what the intake that I've been coming from is people keep saying, why do you have that money sitting there? Well, that money was sitting there for one purpose and one purpose only, and we have to adhere to that. Or, or as a membership, we can say we're done with that. That right. ship sailed. And we need to release it for other things. It's not release it for this or that. It's just like, yes, we want to keep the island fund, or no, we don't. So, Helen, to, to, to that point, mm -hmm. you don't know because the organization has not asked its membership. Right. It, it, it comes up every meeting as, what are we going to do with the island access funds? But, but, but there has not been something that's gone out to the community, going, look, let's give you all the history. Right. right? Here's the whole history. Here's why at some point over the years, we kind of mean we don't need 
island access. Right? Let's open this up for some yeah. comment and stuff like that. And you know, I, to me, I think the thing now, instead of trying to repatriate the fund, is do you still see a vision for an island access or not? Right? And and I think the membership should be pulled on that. And I don't think they have. To. Okay. So that you, and you maybe maybe here at some meetings, but not. No, I'm all for doing it into a full membership. I, I personally would rather have it right. to a full membership, but I think it needs to be worded that if as a full membership, the votes come back and it's like, no, we do not see the need for an island access anymore. That money is going to be moved out of that island access fund into a general fund. Right. The way that you're setting the question up, uh, uh, maybe to piggyback on something that, I picked up on when Christy said what she said, is that the, the position you're putting folks into is that if they don't want to give this board carte blanche to spend $100,000 for whatever you want to spend it on, that all may be good community projects. I'm not, I'm not arguing that one. What you're doing is, is they have to vote yes to keep the island access because that keeps the money out of the general fund until something specific is done. So the question, the way that you're talking about wanting to word the question is it goes in the general fund or it doesn't. It stays in the access fund or it goes to the general fund. Uh, I think you might get uh, some votes to keep it in the access fund just because they don't want it to go in the general fund. Now that's, that's my fine. personal that's, opinion. It, that's why fine. Not? That's fine. And you know why I want to do it? So that it can be communicated to the general membership that there is an island access fund it is specifically for yeah, that for. that and if you want to keep it for that that's great that's what it's to be spent for if you don't the only way it can be spent for anything else other than that is to come out of that and if you're not ready for that that's okay too I'm, and you probably not, could not buy an island access well, you definitely can't buy nine thousand dollars exactly so, so plus that's more but but it went for five years. It was started in, in uh, 2012, and the vision was for five years to raise the hundred thousand. Seven. seven years, I'm sorry, exactly. To raise the hundred thousand dollars, it did raise what it intended to raise, and there, here it sits. And so, if we either need to try to spend it for the island access, if that's what you wish to do, or we need to move something else. So speaking of, speaking of that, I, I get that, you know, things are more expensive now, but, you know, if Island Access is what the membership votes on, I will donate more money towards that. And, I'm, and I'm sure other people okay. would too. Okay. All right. You know, so okay. I think that we discussed this long enough now. Okay. So um, is, yeah, that when, is it possible to put it into a, in, in on the election body? So we will come okay. up with some type of uh, um, wording and composition one it's just like a regular vote right? okay the, the, you know that a little bit i agree i mean it i just need to know a little bit of history history behind it and and either we're going to keep it as that or we're going to okay. fine so we will um, I'm, I'm sorry composition one i'm just saying oh, like right. in the election right so you're voting for three right, right. board okay. members and okay. voting on proposition, proposition one. one exactly it could be labeled it's just that. a example right okay okay so can we move on now everybody raise we discuss this enough There's i know mm -hmm. uh is there any other business now um the nomination committee report sue ann you want to go over that yeah. real because i do sad. think that <coughs> excuse me who's talking that was my phone. Okay, oh, I, think, I think there. That was Siri. I think there were a couple things. Try again. A couple people flew in that did not hear when you said about. Uh, some were here about yes. how the nominating committee can run. Just run that by us again. Sorry, I can't stand up. Vocal folks. Okay. Okay. Bylaws call for the president to appoint a nominations committee. Joanne appointed Jackie Burns and me. We will send out an email. It will also be posted on the website that nominations are open. There are three positions every year, three board positions. Those people you know, would retire or stand for re-election. And we are receiving nominations from near the floor, everybody. <clears throat> you may nominate yourself 
or you may nominate for some someone else, but we just ask that you speak to them first. Don't out of the clear blue nominate them. And let you know. <clears throat> yes, you can you can respond. You respond, I'll give you Jackie's and my email address. You can respond to us. You um we were get, suggesting two weeks to give you time to um, make those nominations. If you give people three months, you know, they just forget. So let's do it in a timely manner to the end of November. And then we take the vote in December. It can be put on election buddy. Since it's going to involve multiple names, it's not a yes, no. And, and I guess if it were just yes, no, maybe on the website, but, but David has said, no, we can't do an election on the website. So election buddy, I send everybody a link, every, every member, you know, two, two members per household. I send you a link and you can only use it that way. You have to receive a link to vote. So you don't have non-members or just whoever voting or somebody voting a bunch of times. You'll get one link and that's it. And that's what we'll do the month of December. And we will announce the who the, they are at the, uh, the meeting on January. And the, and the Brian, is running for Brian's seat is up, Joanne Beermeister's seat is up, and Dave Fulme's seat is up. They all three are standing for re-election, and Swin, so far Swin, Swinford has um, put his nomination in, and the vote is, when it so comes up on election, buddy, you will <clears throat> vote for three. And it's just, whoever takes the most votes, those will be the new And there may members. be more. There's and there may be more on that. Right. There may be more. And, and, I, I hope when you, once so, you put it out there, right? It will, and so that's how the uh, the nomination. And out. if you're wondering why didn't we vote last year, the last two years maybe more, but the last two years we have received no other nominations than what the nominating committee put out. You know, three positions, so that at least they would be filled. But there were no other nominations emailed to, nobody, to us. Nobody else wanted so to. So they were elected by acclamation. There was no point in having an online election. There were only three candidates or three board seats. So that's why you didn't vote last year or the year before. Does anybody have any questions on that? Any other business now? David, I would ask you, since you usually have something else. So just an information update. So on the there are 123 active member households in UCCA. Ten have been added in the time frame from September through today. So as we talked about, there are people joining. Most the majority of those are joining online okay. on the website. Yes, they pay on site and, and get their sign up. Most people seem now to be managing their own profiles and information. They actually put a little picture on there like you can do on the website so that, that other people can see who you are when you, when you log in and such. So, and you said 123. 123 members. active, uh, active household. households. Which might be more than one per right. Oh, sure. so in many oh, cases. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. We, we, we mentioned, mentioned that. that. Yeah. The only thing yeah, I'm yeah. saying is, is that people, some people thought right. it was just 123 right. folks. And it's and there it's, are votes, right? Well, it well, is, two, but it's two votes, two, per, uh, two per, votes household. per household. Up to, that's up, to, up to, up to, yeah. up to uh, that's what I mean. Up to two per household, exactly. Okay. Active, uh, how's that membership level compared to years? Active, active is currently paid dues for 2024. You had some this person that just paid for um, that paid two years, so they paid ahead, but that's the same thing. So yes. How's that membership level compared to years past? Uh, I sent an like email to the board, and, and it's, it's, and it's, it's been at like 118, 108. It's really been there, very steady. Very steady the last five years. Pretty, yeah. For the last five years. The normal yeah, the last five years. Before, it was, it was in the 200s, and at one point, when I first got here, I think it was mm -hmm. three. Oh, no, not households. No. Yeah, it was Never. Oh. So it must have been 150. Oh. Right. It can be 300 households. Yeah, I don't have that many. 
So anyway, so that's I just wanted to give you that information. Uh, I told you about the email subscription list, so if anybody has trouble, they did not receive a notice of this meeting, although you're here, so I guess you did, but you could, might not have and heard from your friend or somebody. Email the info at and, and let me know, and I'll figure out why it is. If you think you subscribe, but you're not getting any information, uh, if you want to subscribe, there's always a place on the website to subscribe. In fact, it'll pop up and aggravate you to say, hey, you signed up. This is really cool. Um, we're going to, that's one of the efforts that we have to do um, every year is that the, your subscriptions are going to be expiring at the end of 2020. Of course, there'll be functions to go out where an email, if you're online, will go out to auto renew or not auto renew to online renew. So you can renew and pay online if that's what you want to do. But we'll work on that as a part of things between now and the end of the year. Now, a couple of years ago, you auto, uh, PayPal, they wanted you to pay, they automatically renewed you and charged your credit card. But there were people that objected to that automatic renewal, and I don't blame them. So we removed that function. So now you do have to actively go to the website and pay your dues every year. Every year. So there'll be information coming out. It would be easy to do. Click a button and finish your meeting. And, if you're interested. And I want to mention something. I don't know if everybody oh, yes. their new phone book. It, so we had gave some out. I have. Personally. And I've got the yeah, list of who I've given them, them, and I brought 10 with me. Yeah. If uh, you got gotten yours, Alice. You gave one to Alice? Oh, she has a she, told, she gave me a mission. To get oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. I'm looking, yeah. That was the only reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't go back without it. <laughs> you all call him that. There was an illusion. <laughs> okay, just thank you for humoring yeah. me. <laughs> and, and if you know anyone that is a member that you can say, did you get your phone book? Because I've tried, tried to deliver. I can right. right. deliver. Right. So we have my own people are here. Did ours? Well, you got yours. Did Piper get ours? Yes, you did. I even paid one year in advance, so. You can't have two. I won't. Want <laughs> My wife won't let me up for dinner or lunch. And, and, it, and I want to tell you, it's, you have it's really well, that nice. wouldn't be a bad thing. We, it's really nice. It turned out it's nice. It's really nice. And okay. it, it's really good. But, all right. So can we? Uh, yeah. Do I have? Uh, I, I move. Do you want anything else? Other business. Else? No, no. David. Oh, Nicole. I'm sorry. No, I just want to bring something up. Sure. Like, um, less than a year away from the 100th anniversary of the island. Oh. Um, should we like start planning some sort of festivity or it's something? It's the first time I heard. Uh, it's what the first time I've heard. What do you mean to the island? <laughs> Uh, well, I guess the other thing that split Captiva and half. Oh, well, well, the Captiva would be hard pressed to. T or to say that that we were all on it because we still run under Captiva's zip code. Yeah. So, so, so where's yeah. that? So where's so, that community so, lead? Right. Talk to that so, woman right there. So, so, so according cool. to Captiva, yeah. we're still part of that. Interestingly <laughs> enough, uh, Liba <laughs> has taken our zip code off. That's all right. We have no zip code. So oh. now we don't have a zip code. Yeah, we have no oh, zip code. I'd rather do Liba I'd rather do that than be on part of Captiva. No, it really is the first time. Yeah. And I've had. And then yeah, I've also heard the hurricane was in 1918. This, this meeting has been recorded, which you can have a link. So yeah. do, do we need anybody's permission if you wanted to post it on the website? No, that's uh, yeah, okay. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine you'd have trouble with that. I think it's public without trouble. So. And yeah. I want to ask you to send it something to me after you're finished. Just email it to me and I'll post it. It's a new thing. We've done something new. Yay! So the champion of the year. You mean I'll take your link and put it on Facebook? Yeah. Post it on, on your website. Uh, Facebook. Facebook's the devil, man. What do you mean the Zoom? Just the new picture. That was in there. I love it. Okay. So can I, I join this. I just want to say this. I have two bicycles in the boxes still from oh, we were going to have for the auction. And because we had to cancel it because of COVID, I want permission to see if I could sit with someone and sell tickets. I could probably make more money just selling tickets for the bicycles. Your nice and bikes. do a raffle, you mean? Yeah, you mean do just, a raffle. Just freestanding a raffle. Yeah, and I'll sit out there and sell yeah, tickets with somebody and take turns. I mean, they're sitting in my garage in the boxes. 
huge, you know, nice bicycle. So I just want permission to know if I can do this. Yeah. Those big tire things. Yes or no? That's all. Well, it's going to be limited you know what? to people who are on the island. That's right now. I say, I say, let's let's go. Let's go. go oh, no, let's do, do something it. later. Do it or don't. Do it. You said do it. Don't do it. Don't. 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 We'll okay. discuss it. No. Not now. Right. We'll discuss it in another board meeting. Uh, yeah, because it is a board. Because you know what, they were put for that. So that that's something that the board can decide. We shouldn't do it there. Okay. Okay. Adjourn. I'm going to adjourn. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Meeting is adjourned.